Welcome everybody to It's a Crime. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Linda, and tonight we have a very special guest. We have Chris from the interview room on. Welcome, Chris. Hi, Miss Linda. How are Hello. you? Hello. I feel a little bit um, um, green right now. I've been away for like 10 days or something like that, and uh, I feel a little rusty. So uh, we're going to have a great show tonight, though. Uh, before we get into it, because, you know, we like to, I like to let get, let's get into it, as I say. Um, I just want to say a couple things before we we start chatting and and um, we're going to be talking about Summer Wells case tonight. OK, and we are going to do that in its entirety. Unless me and Chris decide to talk about something else, then we will. But other than that, our focus tonight will be on Summer Wells. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to do a giant thank you to um, all our moderators tonight. I know it might get a little crazy in here, but with that being said, I want to say that keep it classy, as I always say. And the other thing is you're in my house tonight. So you're in my house, keep it classy, be respectful. And if you don't want to be respectful, then you're no longer on my welcome mat. So that's all I'm going to say. Keep it classy. And I know we have an incredible group. Uh, a lot of our mods are on. I think a lot of my mods are the same as your mods and a little bit like that, Chris. So we have a great, great group. So thank you ahead of time. I will get to some questions. It might be a little you know, hit or miss. I don't have a D-man like Chris does. So <laughs> it's going to be a little bit of juggling. So bear with me. Okay. And, uh, and I think that's about it. Just keep it classy. We'll get to as many uh, questions as we can. And welcome to those in the crime ring. So now, whew, that being said, let's get into it. Boom. All right. So Summer Wells. Obviously, Summer Wells is still missing. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up because the TBI is still saying, and I think there's been some miscommunication about this, uh, about the truck, right, Chris? The truck is still, uh, they're still on the lookout for the truck. Is that correct? Correct. They're still looking for that Toyota Coma. And okay. uh, it, it's red with racks. Red with racks. Still looking for the Toyota Toyota Tacoma. And I think it's, was it in the, um, oh my gosh, 98? Was it 98 to 2000 they were guesstimating it was? Do you remember? Yeah. Oh, I think you're frozen there a little bit. Yeah. Looking for my note. Nope. Did it, was that me? Yeah, I think you were a little, you got stuck for a minute, but you're back. Hang Am on. I putting on you spot? <laughs> what's going on? No, I don't know what's going on here. Hang on. I'm sorry. Hey, no this, worries. No, I'll just, is, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I am in the boondocks. <laughs> all right so how about well i'm that? up in canada so this is similar right thank you brandy she says thank you linda and chris our mods are the best find summer wells okay we this is what we're doing we're gonna have a chat tonight now some of you are already asking hey linda have you seen the interviews so i came back on wow. monday and i uh, i have been binge watching chris's interviews on the interview room and if you haven't seen it after this show, you can go over and take a look at all his videos. See, so Chris has uh, interviewed uh, Candace Wells, or AKA Candace Bly, Dawn, um, Hunter. And so he's just doing major deep dives. And okay, so so you're okay now, Chris? You're, you're good to go? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah, much Emily, better. Can you hear me? Much better. Sorry about that, My, I apologize. Okay much better that's okay we're, we're on we're just starting so chris i know you've been on the property you you've been working on the summer wells case you've been uh you know talking to those um you know the family so can you just tell us i want to talk about the terrain a little bit first and and the surroundings around the home and what that's like sure so it's uh, you know eastern tennessee i mean number one it's a beautiful area uh, a uh, and where we were at is, you know, the Kingsport's a, a great city. I mean, it, it's really a really nice city. But then as you go out a little bit further into the country, uh, you start picking up dense woods, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, valleys with, um, you know, little horse farms, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, not agricultural uh, in terms of, uh, you know, beans or corn or anything like that. A little bit further as you go, you know, past Ben Hill Road, where all this is going down. Uh, if you keep driving 
out that way, it gets really, really beautiful. And it, it, it's, it's really a Sunday, te- what I call a Sunday Tennessee drive. Uh, you know, you turn the music up, you hit the road, uh, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Uh, but where, where um, the wells live, you know, they are up on a ridge line. Uh, very high off of a, a, a pretty well-traveled road where folks, you know, they come blasting down that, that road there. And so they're really um, up high and a little bit isolated mm-hmm. uh, up on the top. But they are closest to the ridge line, And I think it's about 11 acres uh, worth of property. Yeah, I think I, I, I was reading into that, too. And it actually reminds me, the terrain reminds me a little bit like Canada and like a cross between Colorado, would that would would that be correct with all the forestry, like the the different? Yeah, that's a good description of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does remind and, me of that. So and hi hi to all our Canadian friends, by the way. <laughs> yeah, hello Canadian friends is right. Sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. So this is a really good <laughs> description. I've never been to Tennessee, so I just see that it's it's really really lush with trees yeah. in that area. And Candace exactly. and, and Don's house is like you said, it's kind of secluded up on that hill and then surrounding and they have a circular driveway. I thought I had a picture, but I don't, but that's okay. Yes. So it it does. It is. So when you go up that Ben Hill Road, mm-hmm. it goes way back and it gets really narrow, like one one car narrow. I mean you can get two cars in there, but you have to pull over and let the other one pass and then continue and then you have to turn right up into their driveway and it's very steep i had to put it in four-wheel drive to get up it and when you went up um from your videos i did see there was dogs there there were quite a few i know you're making reference to having a zoo license (laughs) because there's so many animals explain a little bit about that was it like crazy when you first went up because it wasn't really clear as as to obviously what happened because you're trying to film and all that yeah, as soon as uh, you pull up, and when I pulled up to behind Candace, because she was, you know, driving ahead of me, and right out of the woods, here come the dogs. And when I was up there, I counted a total of 13 dogs, approximately. Okay. And they had free reign of that entire property. Um, but when I got to the top, as you could see, there were more dogs up there. So... Uh, you know, there were like three or four dogs that came out of the woods at the bottom, and then at the top uh, were a bunch of Russell. You know, we had Buddy. So, yeah, we had Buddy with us. So, you know, Budjo was barking at everybody, and they were all barking back for a little bit, but they were barking at the truck uh, as I was coming back up and so. Yeah, there's a lot of dogs, that's for sure. (laughs) And what I found interesting, um, just as a side note, because I was also listening to Don's interview, and he had said, like, he he was talking a little bit about the dogs, and he said, you know, sometimes, I don't think he called them dumb, but he says, like, you know, just sometimes they're just lazy or whatever. Um, But that day that summer went missing, he made reference to that the dogs weren't there that day. Am I correct in saying that I heard that correctly? Correct. Okay, and, and I know he said they were they were um, tended to you know go for days and come back hungry. Yeah, I mean, don't ask me how that uh, you know what that means. Um, you know, when we got there, and I know when other people got there, there were dogs everywhere. Mm-hmm. In fact, there's pic- there's pictures with dogs, and one of the one of the um, uh, critiques was that the searchers who brought dogs, i.e. bloodhounds, uh, did not isolate the other dogs. And so that's kind of, uh, you know, one of those conversations that I'm sure at some point there will be a conversation about, you know, why that wasn't, why that didn't occur. But that doesn't mean, um, you know, there were a lot of dogs, but there were definitely dogs there that day. I know that for a fact. Okay, thank you for that. And so you you go up there, you're going up the driveway, and I understand you have to unlock it. Candace has to unlock it, go up the driveway. And then you get to the house. Uh, one of the things, maybe we could talk about this, because I, I would like to talk about, um, number one, a coworker that, that Dawn was talking about, 
And then the possibilities in there, because once you get in there and you got in the house, it's quite shocking in terms of the possibilities and some of the things that you're like, wow, like where the staircase is inside, how it's kind of like hidden. It's a, a, it's a different kind of, I've never seen anything like that before. So let's talk a little bit about that because even I was watching Greg and uh, Dean talk with you, obviously, and it, it was just very fascinating to see um, what's possible, what's not possible. Yeah, I mean, you know, when Candace walked in, you know, I was looking for a stairwell uh, because, you know, everybody was talking about, you know, downstairs. She went downstairs, the boys, right, the conversation. Well, she walked around uh, and, you know, there was that stairwell underneath there that uh, was built underneath the, uh, it's like a table, but uh, I think Candace said that Don likes to call it, uh, you know, like a bar or something. Bar. Not a not a drinking bar. It's just kind of like a a table bar, right? And the stairs underneath that, they they built the stairs with a cutout, and it goes down into the the lower lower rooms downstairs. Yeah. So, um, and then you go downstairs. So so maybe we should talk. Do you want to talk about downstairs first? You want to talk about outside first? What would you? What should we talk about? It's a, this is your show, Linda. I, I follow okay. your lead. <laughs> okay, let's let's uh, let's talk about outside first, and then we'll talk about downstairs. So I feel like we should talk about it because there's so many different nooks and crannies and um, uh, terrain again, and how it's all encircled. Like the house is here, and there's a, a circular driveway, and then you have all the trees around. So um, tell me a little bit about that, and then I'm going to bring up some questions, and we'll, we'll chat about that. Sure. So as you're coming up their driveway, um, as you've probably heard it described, you know, multiple times from uh, other people, and including Don, I'm sure of it. And as you come up the driveway, that there, that driveway is just horrible. Uh, it's got huge ruts in it. It uh, all the all the gravel you just washes right down in the rain down to Ben Hill Road. So you need an all-wheel drive vehicle and or you know a pretty sturdy truck you know, to get some traction to get up on the top. So I put my truck in four-wheel drive, and we went up to the top, and then there's a quick right that you have to take. And it's a very tight right. And, you know, if you live there, it's not a big deal. But if you're coming up for the first time, you've got, you've got to navigate that right-hand quick turn, and then it wraps around. Uh, it wraps around to the, to the left. Okay? And then it pass, it comes up on the house on your left, the basement door on your left and then you get up uh, to the top there and when you're there you know you, you there's no room to park other than in the middle of the road uh, uh, and then there's one other spot where her mom's truck was that day and as straight ahead is a shed uh, that had the door partially open and then the house was behind me on the left her swing was about uh, you know the the um, uh, about the nine o'clock position straight out, and so and then there was a steep drop, and there was these little dirt bike trails that go around the the lower property and then into the into the woods. Right. Okay? And yeah, so they, there's you know if you were a kid and you wanted to play hide and seek, that's a really cool place to do it. Uh, because there's a well, lot sure. of, but now behind grandma's uh, camper is a very steep drop off. Okay. And you can see the road from, from that area. Uh, and there's some wire lines below there. And then there's a creek uh, down there, but it's a very rough terrain back there. So, you know, kids, you know, you wouldn't want to go that way. You'd want to go the opposite direction. Uh, it's, you'd probably want to go the same direction Don took us uh, for the video uh, on the, you know, the dog trail. Okay. And so and right in that area where the um, creek is and the uh, power lines, Candace had said that they were thinning it out just a yeah. couple of days before. Correct. Summer went missing. So that caught, you know, that caught my attention because I was like, wow, OK, so there was a couple of people there. Um, thinning them out, the trees, and then um, 
So that would be, like you said, right where Candace's mom's trailer. So we'll call her grandma. Grandma's trailer right. is. Okay. And then the sight line from grandma's trailer to the front door or kitchen door, as Candace calls it. And then the swing right in front of that. And which Summer, we know, likes to go out there and swing. So right. when you're looking around there, and, and I'm tightening the timeline, and for those of you, um, you may or may not know, I love doing timelines in my videos. You'll be seeing a couple timelines in the next couple days. Uh, I have already done one uh, because Hunter offered the timeline to Chris. So thanks to Chris, I was able to do a timeline on that. And I've been working on Candace's because Candace has given the same thing and I'm giving her that opportunity as well. And I will be uh, doing that for a timeline. So I love doing timelines. So just so you know, like hit the subscribe and the like and whatever. And so you can see that in the next couple of days as I start to tighten it and show uh, the timeline. But uh, what, one thing that you're, I'm starting to really see, and a lot of us are, is how tight it is by the time they get home. And Candace explains all these things, but really uh, by the time, you know, Summer was going downstairs and we're gonna talk about her room and then all of a sudden she's gone. And because of the way the house is situated and we have dogs, we have, or lack of them, if that is what happened that day, but we have their dogs and we have grandma still on property, mom's still on property, boys are in the house, and one, well, there's two doors, but really the one basement door and what that means or what that could mean. I mean, uh, we're going to talk about the coworker in a minute because Dawn talks about this coworker, which is concerning as well. So let's talk about the basement, uh, if you will. And we'll just, we'll, we'll go in there. You're in the house. You go to this bar thing. We kind of have that here. It's kind of like, you know, the higher counters where you put bar chairs on it. That's kind of what it reminds me of. And then Candace goes in and she's walking backwards down. So tell, tell us a little bit about that. So, yeah, so she, uh, you heard me say, is there another way in? <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I looked down there and I went, hmm, this is interesting. And so she, I said, hey, is there another way in, essentially? I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But uh, she goes, no. She goes, Don, you know, he's a, Don's bigger than you and he can do it. I said, okay. So I went down there, and it's a very, it's probably two and a half feet wide, um, thereabouts, maybe 30 inches wide, maybe, maybe two feet wide. Um, and at the, you, it's a, you know, I'm not going to say it's a real steep, but it's steep uh, to where if, you know, you've got to duck down, and then you've got to watch yourself going down because it's really dark. Uh, right. And that's and when you get down to the bottom, there's a beam, a header beam, uh, that you have to duck down, and so you're you're going down it, kind of compressing your body, okay. And when you get down to the bottom, to the left, is mom and dad's room and that uh, door, at about nine o'clock with the with the glass on it, which is their basement door, to the uh, in the the parents' room was a bed on the floor uh, with blankets. There was um, a TV on, which was not pornography. Right. It was inappropriate behavior, obviously, from stupid stuff. Girl but it wasn't slashing. pornography. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, you know. And, and then to, as you start scanning to the right and go to the 3 o'clock position, there was a, there's, a, there's bunk beds, okay, where... You know, the boys could sleep, but there was also bunk beds upstairs when you first come in. So there's four sleeping areas, and then there's a mattress on that floor. Okay. Oh. Yes. You can't see it in the camera, but there's a mattress on that floor. Okay. So, and then to the right, against the wall, the far wall there, uh, was all of Summer's um, um, toys. And then there's a rack a multi-tiered rack that had Summer's toys, uh, some videos. It had a TV at the very top. And, you know, Candace was kind enough to show me, you know, Summer's things. You know, she likes Paw Patrol Paw and Patrol, you yeah. know, little girl stuff, you know, Barbies. And all of that stuff was there. You can't see it real well, okay, but it, it, it is there. And so 
on that on that far wall in that room at at about the eleven o'clock position is a plug. I know some people think it's a camera. It's not a camera. It's a plug. Okay. And then behind me, uh, about six o'clock is a wall is a window with a um, like a reflective mm-hmm. uh, piece of the outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, light light reflection. So. And uh, that was kind of making that room pretty dark. The room as a whole uh, is very dark with no lights on. If if you, did, you she I think Candace had one light on when I came down uh, that it was already previous on when we turned the corner. Uh, so, but it was still very 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 dark. Yeah, um, and before we okay, so I want to keep talking about this, but it's something that comes to mind because um, I, I understand that this house is not that big, right? It's like. 800 square feet or something on one floor. Yeah, it's it's a pretty humble abode. So yeah. my question is is it is the reason why the staircase is the way it is is because if you put the staircase down you'd lose a lot of that square footage and that's why they have it like that or I mean it's I'm just curious as to this interest. I mean that, that could be I I know they did the remodel. Uh you know Candace shared with us as you heard her you know that they built you know uh, part of that and then the other the, but they attached it to the house. Uh, that existed so that's where the basement right. is and they created that the basement so right uh, I, okay so that okay i see what you're seeing so right where the extension is is right where that correct okay got right. you okay so let's go back to the basement so we're in the basement it's very dark um i i didn't recognize that there was bunk beds it was hard to see yes. um, in there and so you have the bunk beds then you have the uh, their bed on the floor correct there's a bed on the floor, yep. And then there's another mattress? In the parents' room on the floor. Yeah, okay. So now now you got to get out, like, outside, right? There's Is there much floor space down there? Uh, you know. Beds, is there a... Yeah, I mean, it was a whole, it, it, it's kind of like, you know, um, kids go downstairs and, and, you know, play with your toys, right? Yeah. So at one end is where all the toys are, Okay. And then at the other end, and then to the left, is a mattress, a big mattress. It's a like a full size mattress on the ground. And then there's two, uh, there's you know two bunk beds. So you know if there's three kids and all three of them can sleep in there, okay. But then you have to ask yourself, which I did, you know, in my opinion, who's sleeping upstairs in the other two bunk beds? Right. When when you first come through the door, you see those bunk beds right there. And you think to yourself, okay, and I even ask, is, is this Summer's room? Is this, is this where she sleeps? And she says, no, that's where the boys, the boys stay. And so I think the younger one and Summer were downstairs. Yeah, she mentioned that, yeah. yeah. And then the other two up. Okay, so now, she, okay. So really, we're looking at that one door. Correct. Right. And the floor upstairs is just, you know, plywood, right? Yeah. Didn't see it's it. just a subfloor. Yeah. It's a yeah. three quarter inch plywood subfloor with no carpeting, no nothing. And downstairs is just uh, concrete. It's a concrete floor. Okay. So just concrete. Okay. Basement, mm-hmm. regular basement to us Canadians up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless we Correct. finish it. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. right. I know many people in the States do not have basements. So I learned that a long time Correct. ago. Correct. Right. But Canadians. Yeah. So, okay, so now that this one door, so really, um, and one thing that caught my eye is Candace saying sometimes, you know, Summer will come outside and then she'll whip outside, to either sit there or walk around back to her swing. So it's possible uh, that she was opening or could have opened the door to go out there um, from what Dawn and Candace said. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. I mean, Candace opened the door and you know, kind of describe it as sometimes it's, you know, uh, easy, sometimes it's tough. I asked Don, does, you know, the baby have an opportunity, you know, is she strong enough to open this door? And, you know, he said yes, and, you know, he can, she can even pull herself up, yeah. you know, her full body weight. Um, and so, you know, th- there's been some discrepancies in relationship to whether the door was open, whether the door was closed, whether it was locked. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, I guess we'd have to put it up on the board and say, 
you know, let's look, what about this? Yeah, I, I have been going through that, obviously, the, some of the things, you know, how I like to connect. Some... <laughs> That's what we know about you, Miss Linda. <laughs> you, you have an analytical mind. I said that from the day we met you. Yep. So yeah. I, I can't wait. Yeah. I, and, <laughs> and because I was away, I even purposely not didn't watch. I purposely didn't. And but then I came home and going, holy moly, I'm binge watching all this. And then a few times trying to get this all together. So. I'm, forgive me if I have a zillion questions tonight, but I no, want to please. talk through this. And um, one of the things that I did notice was uh, no, being, you know, not sure if it was locked or not, but Canada said she went through the door. And then Don was also saying, well, you know, sometimes I tell the boys, you have to keep the door shut. So it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's hard. I mean, at the same time, when you're in shock and you're trying to run and find your kid and trying to figure out where they are, you might not remember if it was locked or not. You just open the door. That's what you remember. So there's there's a few things. But, man, I got to say, like, thinking about, number one, there's 54 pedophiles in the area. Number two, um, I watch Dean and Coop, or Dean and uh, Greg's, I say Coop just like you. I only know the guy a couple of times. Um, I saw theirs and they made some really, really, really great statements about the possibilities of um, um, and the risk, uh, you know, high risk versus low risk and all that. So it, it's very interesting to me about the possibilities and that I heard Don. When was that video? Two days ago, I think you put out that over yesterday. Um, Don talk about a coworker, which is very, very concerning. So maybe we can talk about that for a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, there are two coworkers. Okay. The, the first one is a guy that he fired that he's been right. working with for seven years. Okay? Right. And, and apparently this guy is, you know, crack a uh, as much as he can into dope. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but for some reason they hang out together. So... You know, he's kind of a creepy guy, right? And this is the guy that Don has put as the first suspect in line. I'm not going to give you his name because yeah. I don't, you know, that. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's the guy that Don felt was very suspicious and that at some time early on, uh, recently or thereabouts, uh, he was on the property uh, and he apparently... You might have to repeat that little last bit there, Chris. On stair. Okay, we might have to hang on. I... <laughs> yeah, we missed you I... there on that one. So we have to go back to the one co worker, and he, and that was all we got. Is it, no, I think what you just have a little bit now? of connection to you because you're that in the boonies. Better? That's why. Yeah, you're just in the boonies. That's why. So you cut off for a minute there. Okay, so. <laughs> Sorry, one sec, Chris. It's not your microphone. It's Can you your hear me? connection. Yeah, it's your connection. It's just a little bit wonky. I'm going to see if I can put that in the comments on the side here for you. Um, Testing. There you go. That's better. Can you? Is it? Yeah. Can you hear it now? Okay. Yeah, so, it was just connection. It was your connection. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. I apologize. No, it's okay. I, Don't be sorry. It's okay. Okay. So uh, the second guy, or the this guy that uh, Don Don the fire. Hired him the day before. Okay. Yes, the day before. Well, okay, so this is the guy that he talks about as his number one uh, guy, right? Yes. Uh, that, he, that he feels would have the motive to... For lack of a better term, right? So, if this so is an abduction scenario... Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just saying because you're cutting out, so I'm just going to reiterate that. So you're saying he, he got fired the day before, the co-worker got fired, and this is number one suspect for in Don's mind. He said, this is number one guy to me. 
Um, and right. okay, so now you keep going. <laughs> okay, so number one guy for Don yeah. is this guy he fired. Okay. And so he feels that this is a, if this is an abduction, it was an abduction, album. yeah. Then, then the theory is this is the guy for revenge that would have done it. Okay. Now, after that is the second guy. Okay. The second guy is who was up on that property that day or shortly there before okay, is a guy that Don went to work with. And they shared a, a vehicle together. Okay. So when we talk about the risk level. Yep. Uh, risk. Yep. A type of terrain. One of the things I can do um, is that that type of event is highly risky for anybody that does not know the terrain right so in what they in what they call in a geographical profiling okay, the suspect has to be comfortable with that terrain so this is not somebody that just pulls up, parks in a driveway, walks up in the hill, right. and snatches a five-year-old. Right. Okay. Very risky. Right. And risky, too, because mom's there, grandma's there, three boys are there, and the terrain, and you've got to get up that hill. Right? Yes. And you have dogs. Yep. And 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 it seems, right? So this is like holy crap if I'm if I'm the offender he'd have to be pretty dang good, wouldn't you say? You'd have to be like stealth mode mission impossible almost. Guaranteed. Okay. And I'll tell you I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 30 seconds. I'm going to drop out for a minute. Yep. I'm going to try to put a better hotspot on so uh, I'll come back in and we'll get these audio things fixed real fast. Okay. Okay. Yep. You do that. I'm okay, right here okay. and uh, I'll be okay. chat chatting I'll, I'll, with the, the group. I'll come right. I'll come right back to make this work. I know you correctly. will. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, okay. So while Chris is fixing that, while Chris is fixing that, we're just going to have a little chat. Um, so basically if you're just joining us, we're talking about the summer Wells case and we are, um, we are talking currently about the property and the risk or what it would take for an offender to come up and how risky that actually is with the terrain, uh, with the people there and, uh, you know, um, everything surrounding that. So if you're just also joining, we're just talking also about Don. He's saying that he has a number one suspect in his mind which is a coworker, and Chris is just starting to talk about uh, two coworkers, which is interesting because I wasn't sure about there being two. It sounded in the interview almost like it was one, and that was on Chris's channel about talking about these uh, these coworkers. So when Chris comes back, we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about that and explore it. And uh, just for also those of you who maybe you've never seen me before, my name is Linda and I like to do timelines in cases. So you will be seeing more timelines coming timelines coming up, especially with Chris is interviewing. Um, I take that, I extract the information and I put it in a timeline. It's a little time consuming, but it's worth it because timelines are obviously important. So I just finished doing one on Hunter. Um, he was the uh, teenager that was with Candace and Summer and Grandma that day. And I, I guess it would be, I think, a, man, I don't know, a week ago maybe I did it. I've been away, so I'm catching up. Uh, but I'm going to give a, a timeline on Candace now that she's going, you know, this is what really happened. And tonight, Chris and I may talk about that as well. Okay, so there we go. We got him back. Woo! Woo! <laughs> All right, how's this? 
Good. That's better? Be better. Yeah, I think so. I think we're good now. Okay, I'm on 5G now. And Martha Frost, I'm not having an old man moment. I see that. <laughs> Trust me, there were two. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. So we're going to be talking about, uh, okay, we're back, back to the coworker. I didn't realize because the way it was talked in Don's interview, I wasn't too sure if he was meaning two or one coworker. There are two. So, okay, so they one guy is a finisher, one guy works with Don, uh, you know, doing well finish work too, butt joints, that kind of stuff. So he okay. Don is a is a drywall finisher, and sometimes Candace works with him, right? And what those guys do is once the drywall is up, they're tapers. They come in and they put the mud down, and they tape and they wear stilts and they can do the ceiling. Uh, they do all the walls, all the butt joints, all the, you know, corners, and, and they, you know, they put the drywall tape up in. So it's, it's, you know, manual labor. Well, the guy that he's been working with for seven years, uh, he says was coming to work that day before, and he, Don felt that he was hiring a kite on stuff. So yeah. he, was mic he was mixing his mud i.e. the drywall mud, okay, that goes on the tape, okay, and he said it was all kinds of dirt and all kinds of craziness in the mud, and he wasn't sure what this guy was doing or what he was talking about, so he went to another room and was working on the ceiling, and he said, you know, I had to come down off my, you know, off my steel, which is his stilts, because these guys work on stilts. And he says, I had to get off my steel. And I went over and I was looking at this guy. And this guy's just like bugging out. Yeah. Okay? And this is where, you know, we had that conversation about, you ever ever heard of crocodile or, you know, craziness, right? Meth, you know, these meth heads will cut their lawn at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and they take, they, take, they take everything apart, too. I mean, toasters, bicycles, you name it. And they never put anything back together. Because, you know, they're hyper, you know, going so fast. Okay. Uh, and by the way, some of the worst murders I've ever seen are people that have been tweaking. Uh, because they're just violent and brutal. Um, so, anyway, long story short, uh, he fired him, according to Don. The day before, according to Don. Right. Okay. So then, the second worker that Don talks about is a guy that he uh, carpools with. And you'll hear him say in that interview, okay, that they were working together. And there's some confusion there because at first he said it was that day. And then he caught himself or corrected himself and said, no, this was earlier. Right. So you have to listen to that interview very I, carefully. Yes. And what did you pick up? Well, because, so I first picked up when he was talking to you, he was talking to you as if it was that day, exactly that. And then you said, wait a minute, that day and he, something to that effect, I'm paraphrasing. And he yeah. said, no, no, not that day, a different day. So I, that's where my confusion is. And I can see a couple of people are, are uh, a little bit as well, because it sounded like he was talking about this one coworker who was on something. And he said, it's even worse than meth. I've, I've been around and this is even worse. And he said he got fired the day before. But then he talked about this same guy. It sounded like from seven years back. And all of a sudden, this guy's back again. It, from, from my impression is what it sounded like. And I did listen to it twice, but I might have to do a couple more times. So t talk about that with where he mistakes that, because that's where I was like, wh all of a sudden he's carpooling and at the house. And I'm going, Correct. what? The guy's at the house? I thought he's at work. You just answered it. <laughs> you know, bingo, bango. So, you know, we'll see what happens. And, you know, okay, that's, listen. That's, there is definitely... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I mean, there's, you know, 
there's some problems there, so I'm going to make a prediction. Don's going to try to correct it after this stream. All right? So that's my prediction. I think he should, because, hey, Don, we're a little confused here. I'm trying to figure that out. That's going to be my, that's, you know, okay, so we're both in the same camp that he'll probably try to correct it. So you probably want to listen Sunday night with uh, Steve. With Steve. I've got Steve from uh, True Lies coming in. Truth to Lies. And awesome. he is he's one of the best uh, forensic statement analysts in the world. Awesome. And he's he's going to be on the my panel on Mon uh, Sunday night. And in fact, Coop is out training right now, or he's just got home. He's got to go um, Sunday night to Texas, so uh, he's training the Police Chiefs Association down there on criminal some stuff, and so he can't be with us, but he'll be on the second part. Awesome. So, awesome. So thanks for the plug. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Sunday night, everybody. And so now, um, there's one other thing that was interesting to me that he said, and he was talking, well, there's a couple things. Um, he was talking about bringing his his car, his car that day, right? Was that correct? Right. Am I correct in that? He said he was bringing his vehicle or, right. or he, the new the new vehicle. Where did the I Su that? Subaru, the, the red Subaru. Subaru. Yeah. Did he, did he also bring it before? But I think that... Oh, sorry. Uh, well, he said he's been making payments on it. Did I lose you? Yeah. No, you're here. I'm here. You here? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. So, and Don's watching. I'm sure of it. Yeah, I, I'm sure he is. It's important. Summer's yeah, still missing. And that's a it's good important. thing because I saw somebody. I saw somebody. I saw somebody put your announcement that on his Facebook page before the show started. Oh, so, okay. And they gave him so good thumbs up. So this is good. Uh, and so. Um, where, where were we? Are we talking oh, about the, the car. Subaru? Yeah, Subaru, red Subaru. Right. Okay, so... Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the... Because it, it's been sitting around, and he's making payments on it. So he decided to throw his tools in it, and he's been driving it for work. Okay, and that, like, like before that as well? Because it was a little unclear in his thing, too. I wasn't sure if he just decided that day or... Um, that was just one of my questions as well. And I mean, you might not know the answer, but maybe Don does. So I know. Well, he would. And, <laughs> right. And his, in his statement, his friend that he travels with drives a white truck. And there's a white truck down at the bottom of the road with all the dogs where Don is standing next to it. I don't know if that's the same truck he was referring to. Okay. But yeah, he that's... said he was in the red Subaru that, that day when he raced back to the house. Right. Yeah, that's what I that's what I heard. And so and the call came in at 630, right? 626. I think he said the 911 call was made. Correct. And and was it both Candace and Dawn or just Candace? Because before I, my understanding was Candace called. There are two. OK, there were two. OK, OK. Thanks for clarifying that. So and he arrived and then the cops arrived. That's what Dawn said, right? Don says he got there before everybody. Okay. How long well, does usually a goal like that, like a, a person goes missing, uh, you make the 911 call, and I know because my husband's a paramedic, just there's a call time that they like to hit uh, and get to the house. Do they have the same thing like that? Yep. Six to eight minutes. Six to eight minutes. Okay. I'd have to ask Mr. Linda. I know he's in here. Um, I can't remember what it is. Because... If if it's an emergency med if it's a medical emergency as an example, yep. six minutes is your timeline before you bleed out. So every cop, every paramedic, every nurse, every emergency personnel, that every dispatcher knows, that's critical to get units on scene immediately. Okay? And you'll hear the nine one one tape where the dispatcher immediately says there's a missing child. Mm -hmm. The supervisor comes on 
and says activate the basic, you know, protocol and also make sure we have other agencies uh, put on standby for mutual aid. Okay. And then, and then one of the questions from the dispatcher basically is, do you want me to notify so-and-so? And the, meaning it was a, um, their, ten co- their code. Okay? Right. And he says, I'll advise. Okay? So this is the first unit responding, and he's already given directions while responding about getting more resources there. Right. So if that's a 30-minute time frame or 40-minute time frame, you know, he must have stopped and got a cheeseburger at the same time. Okay. So we'll see what's going to happen. Yeah, but, because that does not add up. I mean, two plus two is typically four. So I'm trying to think, well, wait a minute. If he got there first and the phone call was at you know, 630, how does that work? And he said he zipped, he did say he was zipping fast, right? He said, uh, zipping fast, but it's about a 45 minute drive. I think it made it, I, like, he said it was fast, but I was just thinking, man, how long did it take those, you know, the authorities to get there? Because if it was my missing child, it better be darn well too sweet coming over and, you know, getting there right. not and a he, half hour away. But don't miss it. He said he got there at 530. He did say that. He said, yeah, he said, I thought it was 5.30, but the, I guess the call came in at 6.30. He said that a couple times. Right. And so if he's making a 911 call at 6.30, okay, the call's already been in. Okay, the first one. So unless it's, you know, the only, the only way that could happen is if, you know, he didn't know that his phone had not automatically satellites Set. Right. The one hour delay in right? Right. In time. You know, so if it's a man if it's a manual clock, uh, then you could say, well, it was seven thirty or six thirty. But right. if it's a phone, the satellite does that for you automatically. Daylight savings time kicks in. Right. So you know, his his schedule's off. Yeah, something, yeah, it's just, just, you know, yeah, something doesn't quite, um, timeline-wise, I'm trying to figure that out, as you know, and so I have to clarify some of these things, and once you start ripping into it, it's like, wait a minute, how does that play out? Um, Yeah, and you heard, you heard, these are not my words, okay? No, this is straight from Don, so. Yeah, ask Don. I see everybody saying, wow, you know, I mean, just ask him. You know about what he what he said. You know, don't ask me. I mean, I'm on. I'm. Yeah, you know, I was trying God. to. I'm trying to. I'm find, trying to find Summer. Okay. I'm. Tr- I'm really trying to find this little baby. And you know, sometimes you've got to ask the tough questions. And I told Don that at the end of the interview that day. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. No. Keep going. That's exactly it. I mean. Uh, yeah details are important that's where Very. that's that's where she's found is in the details the minutia right? yeah it is um some some people will say like linda why are you so focused on like these tiny tiny little like the truth is in the details that's where uh, with anything timeline what happened that day the, like you said tell me about summer what's her personality like because that's huge too that that's huge. So, so here's here's how you know sometimes if things are headed in the right direction. When you're standing next to a mom and she starts walking towards the water where the baby was and she turns to you and says, everything is slowing down. I feel like it's in slow motion. Okay. That is indicative of a true event, okay? because what happens is time slows down, and and I'm not a doctor, but I've been around, you know, enough trauma to see it, watch it, and experience it. Okay? Everything slows down that day, that moment. You can remember the detail yes. of everything 
and, and how important it is, okay? Where you can now contrast that to the other side and you start hearing, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Let me think about that. Well, let me ask you about that. Okay. Maybe. Okay. That is not focus. Okay. When, and, and you know I've shared this with the world. Okay. I've lo I lost a 20-year-old son okay, in 2003. Okay. I can tell you the moment the phone rang. Okay. I rem I've been involved in a lot of different incidences where things just, you just wrap them up and you go, wow, I can't believe we're on the other side of this thing. Okay. So that's the kind of thing you look for with folks who are, you know, being 100%. And, and initially, that initial trauma, okay, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I think Candace experienced it in the beginning. She, she, you know, she's projecting that trauma, okay? Um, and I don't see Don projecting it. So immediately, you know, I, my radar went to the top floor for a second. And then the more he talked, he either brought me down a level, down the next level, but then he would bring me back to the next level. And then up to the top again. And then he'd bring me back down to the second floor. Okay. As an experienced investigator, any experienced investigator, and anybody like you, Linda, who knows how to connect dots, okay, usually you don't press five or six floors in the elevator. Okay? Because what happens is, and this is why I predict he's going to correct that one statement. Okay. What he just heard from us is now he's on the fourth floor. Oh, but man, I better get to the first floor. So we just push the first floor button. Okay. And now once he's down at the first floor, and that's called controlling the narrative. Okay. Where have we seen that before? Just throwing it out there, right? You don't have to name anybody. Okay. <laughs> right? Right? But Something now... Very familiar yeah. That, yeah 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 and so now the other side of that is okay so is this just trauma or is this just you know how it is okay right well i'm going to put another prediction right now okay i just said that so let's see what happens so that's called a bridging statement okay and what a bridging statement is 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 when somebody is trying to guide or or you know not tell it the way it is okay what they do is they listen for the investigator and then they qualify that in their mind okay, or in their secret life okay, and they shoot a public persona okay. but in their secret life they're thinking ahead of the conversation where's this conversation going So there's, there were a couple of times, actually major times, that, um, you know, it just didn't fall into place for me. And, you know, it may be from, from other people okay, that have never sat across from these guys for 40 years. You know, and so I'm very comfortable where I'm at and where, where things are going. Uh, but... You know, the goal here is to find this little baby. And you'll notice I've given multiple outs. Was it an accident? Okay. Go listen to those answers very carefully. Okay. Listen, I mean, very carefully. And then I ask, who's your first person that comes to your mind that did this? And immediately he goes to the dope dealer, all right, uh, meaning his buddy who's on dope. And then he threw some dope dealers into the package. Okay. So then we talked about his neighborhood. 
and he tells us that whole Ben Hill Drive is a dope corridor mm -hmm. where they go up to cop dope. Pills, I mean, he mentions it, right? He, told, he threw it all in the, in the bucket and said, here, you know, sift it. Which one do you want? Okay. Okay, no problem. Not a problem. And so then the second piece of that is what's the other scenario then? Well, qualify that one with, I've always known something was going to happen to her. How do you... I have four children. Not once have I ever thought that something would happen to my children. You know, I'm thinking about a grand, a grand life for my children amazing things to happen for them I want to give them with my sweetheart the best opportunities in the world in his mind he's always known something was going to happen an accident he mentions a couple scenarios okay. yeah. that's interesting yeah he, he did he did talk about that, and, and he said with the co-worker, he feels like it's revenge for firing him the day before, and that this guy would try anything and everything to um, get back at him. So even if we talk about that and, and play that out, well, I mean, somebody who's on drugs and um, is unpredictable, um, and he didn't he say he was there the day before that's where it was m messy because it wasn't too sure he said he was the day before and then he didn't say that because he said he was eyeing up uh, the co-worker was eyeing up little summer and candace was uh, uncomfortable um what i noticed that candace did not bring up that possibility not doesn't mean she didn't maybe off camera but uh, i didn't hear her talk about this weird co-worker and what this opportunity you know what this could be i mean if some guy saw my kid and was creeping on them even looking at, i would say something um you know even just you know say if you're coming to talk to me but doesn't mean that she didn't i'm just saying she didn't on camera so i was curious about that especially i mean obviously don's going to talk to candace and candace can talk to don and i mean you're going to naturally say to your partner what the heck happened and let's you know let's figure this out or whatever Right? Well, yeah, I mean, the natural, the natural, right, the, the natural parental instinct is, you know, the whole reason, you know, children are in families is to take care of them and, and not predict their demise when they're four and five years old or before five years old, okay? I mean, so you have to understand all behavior is purposeful, and but what is what is the purpose then of saying something so then the right. only way the only way to know is you have to measure what precipitated the thought meaning what in the person's past was indicative of somebody saying i knew something was going to happen to her it's kind of like you know where um you know, you, you do something, okay, and you know you did it. I'm not, and we're not talking about Don now, okay? And I've not said he's done it. I'm not, not one time, okay? And I'm not going to. That's the authority's problem, okay? But if you do something, for an example, uh, and I'll, I'll use an eight year old little kid that walks into a store and steals a candy bar. Well, then they have to go home and look at their mom and dad because they take out of their pocket the candy and they start eating it. What's the first thing a parent says? Where did you get that? Yeah. Right? How did you get it? And how did you get it? Right. Now, Parenting 101 says, let's go. Right? And you're back to the store. Okay. And, you know, back in my time, they would hand you a broom after you confessed and 
you know, pled <laughs> for your life, right? <laughs> and you'd have to sweep up the store, okay? And then, you know, you'd have the, the moment where the guy would look at you and say, um, you know, are you going to do it again? No, sir. Okay. You're done. Okay. So now that child knows, okay, going for, forward, okay, well, I wouldn't steal because I didn't like that feeling. I got busted. Yeah. Okay. But then they do it again. And now that prior example and experience has taught them how to manipulate the new experience. Okay. Victims of SA okay, experience all of that manipulation for years. It's learned behavior. Okay. And there's, you, there are some subtle things in that statement. Okay, and there are some really big words in there. Okay, that if you look at some of the history, and that's why, that's why pre-incident behavior, incident behavior, and post-incident behavior is critical to understand if we're to find Summer Wells. Right. Okay. If we ignore the past, then we're bound to experience the negativity of the future because the behavior will continue the unless pattern. the cycle, the pattern, right, which you're a master at, at putting together. You're a master right. at it. And, and I've, you know, Karen and I have both said to you, man, I do not want to ever be on Miss Linda's, you know, board. Okay. <laughs> because, because you're really good at it and, and, and you really have a gift. Okay. So this idea now, okay, you have to start looking at what's post behavior here. Well, the only way you can measure post behavior, i.e., has somebody done something? Well, you have to know what happened at the incident, and you have to know what happened before the incident. Right. Okay? So that's why you've got to connect all three of these, because it comes back to those three principles, public, private, and secret, secret life. This is where the secret life is where all criminal activity and all sin occur. That's where it's, that's where it's at. Well, how do you get the guy to tell you okay, that not him, but anybody? Right. How do you get the Cub Scout leader to tell you that he's been SA and Cub Scouts for five years? Okay. And then you see in the news, you know, Frank was arrested, you know, Scout Leader Frank. Okay. Well, you know, there's guys that have been training for 40 years to know those things. Okay? I'm not a milkman. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. I, I've been putting these guys in prison for many years. Not that they're bad people, don't mis and don't misunderstand that principle. Okay. They need help. Mm -hmm. okay. But here's a point about SA. Okay. You know, it's the only registry we have in all the countries. Why is that? We don't register alcoholics. We don't register, you know, drug addicts. But we register SA offenders. Why is that? Because the system knows they're broken. And so you have to manage them. And that's why there's a registry. If anybody out there in YouTube land can find me another registry outside of, you know, uh, parolees, I'd like to see it. It doesn't exist. Canada doesn't even have have a little. We we can't even. We don't even know how many is in the area. Yeah, um, and you have yeah. you have forty five hundred Native Americans who have evaporated in Canada, and it may be even higher than that. Almost. Uh, oh, I, I've, yeah, it 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 could be 
way up there. We have to do a show about that, Linda, because... Yeah, I was know, just at one of the sites. You were? Good. Yeah, good. Okay, so I don't want to digress, you know, take yeah, you in a different yeah. direction, so no, I apologize. No. no, this is good. This is good, right? Everybody, this is really good. So, okay, so we're talking about that, and, and you're not just talking about Dawn, like you said. You're talking about, like, anybody. That, nobody's focusing on anything. This, is, this case is such a it, it, it's it's so dynamic, I guess, for lack of a better term. There's so many factors. And the thing that um, anyone's trying to do is get to the truth. And then you have to sift through timelines, sift through details. Okay, well, wait a minute. Because it could be that one tiny little detail. Maybe Countess said, oh, yeah, like, uh, oh, yeah. Um, maybe Summer changed her her closers or whatever it is, right? There's this tiny little detail that she may remember or somebody may remember that go, holy crap, we're not going left, we're going right. Let's go find her. And then, and then they find Summer, right? Yeah. If, That's no, the you're most not, important. It, and if, go ahead. No, go. you go ahead. No, it, that's exactly right. I mean, if remember, remember Elizabeth Smart was in the, in the woods right behind their house okay, for a couple of months. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, there, it could be that that could possibly, you know, it, it, there's always a possibility of that. Okay. That's right. Right. So uh, you have to measure then who's responding to that. Well, Ed Smart was in the news every single day with and John Walsh by the way put him up to it okay. and when that case went down you know I was behind the scenes with Ed and his family okay. and the messaging was keep Elizabeth in the news Ed do whatever you want okay and and his sweet wife and what was he doing? Every single day, passing out flyers, getting out there. Where is she? Go, starting search parties, getting involved, going down to the police saying, what do you need? Do you need my blood? Do you need my hair? Do you, you know, yes. what do you need? Okay, everything. Okay. And he was engaged in the investigation. Okay. Well, okay, so... That's post behavior. Well, you got to measure that. What does it mean? Well, immediately they were able to take him out of the circle quickly. And now you have Sheriff Lawson saying in Hawkins County, everybody's in the circle. Yes. Those aren't my words. That's Those right. Those are his words. That's right. Okay? Those guys are working 24 7, 365. To find this little girl. They want, they want to take people out of the circle. Quickly. Yes. Okay? Yes. That's Quickly. how you're going to get to summer. That's the only way there's, we're going to find this little baby. Right. So not only that, they have all these people that are in the circle, plus all the tips that are coming in to sift through, and then all whatever is given, the statements from anybody was in the circle and then having to sift through that, like even through uh, the timeline that I have done uh, with Hunter and Candace, um, you know, there's two different accounts. Now, uh, when I saw Candace and she said, no, no, uh, you know, it was almost the truth, basically that Hunter did say the truth, but he was twisting the order, which actually made sense to me because when I was looking at Candace's timeline, from her going from the hospital to the next stage, which is the uh, discount tobacco shop, that makes way more sense to me than when Hunter was saying it. And Candace looks and says, yeah, I was driving. I'm telling the truth. Like, the, I know where I went that day, right? So it's that little detail yeah. that's important. It is. Yeah. And I talked to the clerk at, you know, Hippie. You know, and hippie I went house. in there. I, I found out what time they were at, you know, the prescription place. Okay. And so, you know, I dialed this in. Yeah. And it's like, okay, that's right. 
that's probably wrong. That's right. Okay? And there's, you know, so you stack it up and then you have to say, okay, well, what are the rights and what are the potential wrongs? And then you say, okay, why? Yes. Not how. Not how. Remember? Why? I agree. Why? 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 One of the whys I'm wondering is, okay, the bathing suit. The, the what, Linda? The bathing suit. When yeah, she changed. Great. Why? Yeah. What, so Hunter says, Candace got there, summer changed into the swimsuit, and then they then they went on, on, on their way. Candace said, no, I put her in the swimsuit at home. Correct. So that she's, you know, because it was hot that day, and it was thin, small and thin, she said. And, um, and she put it in there. But again, there's that discrepancy, and that's exactly what I said. Why? Why is right. it and, two different things? Well, and then, so why is she in her kindergarten outfit the first day of school? And I picked up on the question. I picked up on the question about, you know, um, air conditioning. And why yeah. you asked. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's like, okay, this is like the, well, first of all, she's coming back from the swimming hole. Right. Okay, so we know she's not wearing that, right? Like you said, at the swimming hole. Okay, that's her favorite outfit, her very first day at school. She picked it. Yeah. Okay? And they go swimming. Okay? And Hunter said, you know, she's sitting on a pillow. Yep. The thought, the thought process was, Oh yeah! Oh, that was my. I, I put it underneath her, to so because my mom gets upset about you know the wet. Right, you know, and that was mom's seat. truck, grandma's truck. Right. right, right. So now we move ahead uh, into the house. So I can see her going and changing into the house. Okay? Yes. And coming out with her favorite outfit. Okay. The problem is she's in the car with it. And Don makes a statement that says that's the outfit she was kidnapped in. Well, how do you know that? Right. I didn't ask him that because I, I let him say it. And we're going to analyze that stuff on Sunday. Okay, great. Because one of the things is in the um, Amber Alert, it says pink shirt, great pants. But did he mean pink shirt like what we saw she was wearing or... That because that's the other question, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking at my file. Yeah. To see if I if I have uh, the picture. Well, there. Yeah, everybody can go look at it. It's yeah, in the course. TikTok video, right? Yeah. So, and so, go ahead. No, you go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> I like being interviewed by you, Miss Linda. This is you know <laughs> we're gonna so get you. Questions. You get me in the interview room. Here we come. You know, I know. I, just, I love picking your brain, though. That's the thing. You know that. Well, we and you know, chats. and I hope people understand, you know, even on your channel, right? You're you, you've got great. We got a lot of people in, around the world looking for this little girl, either mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. They're all searching for her in one yeah. way or another. OK, she has absolutely impacted a lot of people. I have not, I am not, okay, saying, you know, who's in the circle or out of the circle. That is, that is for the authorities who have the fluid investigation, and they have much more than, than we have. Okay? Of course. E everything I've done, I've turned over to them. Okay? So, you know, that's, that's my responsibility. And so we look now at this and say, okay, what... What are the statistics? What are the probabilities? Well, in, in our mind, from the Cold Case Foundation anyway, with, with the guys that have looked at this, and by the way, when law enforcement runs out of things to do, they go to the Behavior Science Unit and say, look, we need you to look at all of these details and tell us what we're dealing with sometimes. Sure. Okay? Well, we've already done that from the Cold Case Foundation and our our director used to run the behavior science unit. 
So we, you know, we've already flushed it through what they call the 10 filters of profiling. And our opinion, and I can speak for them because I, I, I can, okay, is the perpetrator is familiar with that property. So either A, they're in the house, or B, outside of the house, but is familiar with with everything around the house. Right. Okay. Now, that kind of now you have to say, okay, so who are the people then that could do this? The crazy guy who spun out on dope website to get fired? That guy? Okay. Can he sneak up the hill, hide out, spun out? Tweaking and snatcher, knowing she's going to be in the basement. Without being caught. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, okay, I'll give it a 2. Okay. And so then the next theory then, or the next concept is, okay, well, if that guy is that guy, okay, then what about, could it be an accident? And it just got out of hand where people panicked. Right. Okay. I'll give that a five. Okay. What, now, the next one is down the road. Okay, down the dog trail. The problem that, that I have with that one and others is she used to chase the kids on the motorcycles. Okay. Now... I don't know exactly what that dog trail is, okay? okay? And so the thought is, could she have gone down that multiple, multiple times? I think the answer is yes. It's the dog trail. Okay. So you could not only have her sent there, you could also have the all the boys there. If you took... If you took a bloodhound into the boys' room and stuck a shirt in their face, would they go down the same trail? I don't know. Okay. I, don't, I don't have the answer to that. So that goes to a five. And now we have to say random abduction, okay, downstairs, on the street, etc. So now you look at post-behavior. What jumps out at you? I don't want to say. <laughs> it's your show. I'm, you invited me. <laughs> well, let's rewind just a sec. Okay. I'm gonna, two, two things on what you just said. Yes, ma'am. Where you came to, we'll do random abduction in a sec. Where you came to about bringing it down into the risks right and how you got there for some of you who may not know how he got there is he ruled out the rest by logic and going around the property and the terrain seeing the entry points seeing who's in the house who's not in the house where's everybody at this point that's where he came down and he's narrowing it down right so uh when he says that person has to know summer the area and that and all these other things uh, all these um uh options if you think about it somebody who's not who's random doesn't know how the heck would they know how to get down those stairs if they went the entry point in the in the front door how you'd have to know that there's stairs there in that bar right and then the yeah, other i one, mean it's an aha moment for sure right and you have to get past three boys Granted, they're watching TV. Well, I hear watching TV, YouTube, Minecraft. Not too sure. There's a whole bunch of different things. They're sleeping, not sleeping. Not sure how you could be sleeping or not sleeping at, at the same at time. At work, at home. At the table. At work, yeah. at home. Maybe not yes and no. You know, it's hither and thither. So that right away. Um, yeah. So they, that person would have to know you could go in that door and down there. So that's where you say, okay, well, that, if that's eliminated, you have the one door. Well, 
like you said, that's so that's just bringing it down to that's why it must be known. OK, so then you were asking me uh, post behavior. Well, that's where I come in and I start looking at the timeline and I start putting things together. But okay, I'm, re- I'm going to relax. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, you know, I do it. And I'm so thankful that you have those videos because I wouldn't know this info snacks. These are info snacks for me because you know I, how I'm nerdy. And by the way, my timelines, I spend days on. I've been spending three days on Candace's timeline because I, I'm after the truth and the, and the details. And then you have to compare to Hunter and you start putting it in together. These, these are important details, just like Dawn. Everybody's, everybody's important. So now I'm seeing mom come out. I'm seeing dad come out. Where's grandma? Yeah, so grandma, grandma has some problems, right? Because first of all, you have to look at the totality of the family dynamics, right? Okay, and you know those dynamics, yes. right? I mean, with family members getting, you know, sent to uh, hospitals in the penitentiary system because they're, you know, sexual deviants. Ooh, I can I say that word? Yeah, that you're YouTube? okay. You're okay. You're good. Okay, I'm so, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> uh, and so now you've got to ask yourself, okay, well, what are the odds of that? Okay. What are the odds of that side of it? Right. Okay. And then what are the odds of, you know, the other side, other family members, okay, uh, that are locked up and now are registered in other states? Okay. What are the odds of that? How many families do you know that have multiples RSOs? We'll call them RSOs, okay? Registered SAs, okay? Okay, right. Okay, so how many families in this chat, I'm curious, how many in your family, okay, how many folks have multiple RSOs? Okay, well... I'm here to tell you the sweet victims know who they are. Okay. And, and I always believe the victim. I've sat with hundreds of them over time. And you just know, okay, yeah, look at all the zeros coming in. And this is from all over the world. Look at that. Okay, look at all the zeros. That, well, this is statistically proving the point. Okay. So then you have to say, okay, uh, then if there's one, two, three, four, okay, and they're all men, maybe five, maybe six, I'm still trying to confirm two more, okay, six potential four for sure one of them is in a state hospital for the disturbed because he's such a threat to society the court says this guy should never get out this is the same circle around this little girl so now we ask ourselves where is grandma where is she? And and what about Rose? Right. What happened to Rose? I'm I'm thinking about taking that on, to be honest with you. Well. And and I've talked to Coop about working with the family, you know, or the PD up there. And I was just in St. Croix, Wisconsin not long ago and you know, doing some stuff. Okay. So you gotta think about holy cow. This is, this is nuts. Okay. And, and, you know, I've been doing this a couple of weekends, and, you know, there, there are a couple of things that you just go, well, that's going to, that's, that's a game changer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you ask any, any, as you know, these sweet women who have been victims of these guys, 
they live with this trauma for for 40, 50 years sometimes until somehow they get the strength to say, I can't do this anymore. And that goes to then this young lady who came forward when Summer went missing, and it happens to be Don's stepsister. Okay. And she told me, for over three hours we talked one night, and she told me she was five okay. when she was first assaulted. Okay. And it ended when she was 12 there was a seven year difference in age and it lasted seven total years until he went to prison the first night he got out of prison he was back at their house and he tried to do it again and she went ballistic and ran into her parents' bedroom and said, he has been molesting me since I was five years old. And the mom, his stepmother, wanted him arrested. He ran out of the house and hid. And his father found him outside and squashed it. Now go look at the statement he gave about his father in that interview. What did he call his father? I'll let you go look at it. Okay. What did he say about his father? His father. This is learned behavior, by the way. You just don't wake up one day and decide to, you know, sexually... Oh, I did it again. I'm so Esther. sorry, Linda. It's okay. It's okay. I'm so sorry. It's okay, Chris. Man, it's okay. You're you're I, passionate I, and talking right now. I get it. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, I'm sorry. My my sweet are. wife will say, "Why why did you say that with her?" She's over there. <laughs> She's like, "Don't say that again." <laughs> okay, it's okay, that's what I love about her. She so, she keeps me. Thank you. You got it, Court. Right there. You you just hit it. Somebody hit in in the thing. We'll, we'll let him say it. Okay, okay he, he said it. Okay. It's, on, it's on the tape. Okay. That's, but you see, that's a subtlety. That's a minutia. Okay. Well, then, when you, when you connect all those dots, which you do amazingly, you connect those, those links of a chain. The truth are links of a chain. Okay. And sometimes you get a bad link, and you got to bend it back over with some pliers, i.e. pressure. Okay? Yeah. And then the link straightens out and it connects it again. And now you know you're on the truth. Okay. Right. So what this, this victim has been waiting 37 years to hear somebody say, yeah, we were young. Okay. Yeah, she would do this. I would do that. Well, she was five. Yeah, that was a mansion. That was was just a lot younger. Just just a bit bit younger. A bit younger. Well, yeah, a bit younger, right? And he was twelve then. So when she was eleven, he was eighteen. Maybe that little better perspective. Okay. Every night. And you know what she told me? What she remembers? The pain. So here's my here here's my assessment of that. Okay. Lucy, you have some explaining to do. As Ricky used to say. Okay. So, you know, folks can be upset with me all day long. I don't I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, trust me. I'm going to go after the next one. Okay. Uh, because I know, what, I know what my purpose is. Okay. And my purpose is this little Summer Wells. Okay. 
But what else has come out of this is some healing. And by the way, there's no statute of limitations in the state where this person lives. But I'll tell you something. Three days ago, he called his father and confessed. She called me yesterday crying. Think about that. Okay. Think about that. And the other thing, you know, well, there's other things, but I'll let her share that side of her life. And she gave me permission, by the way, to share this. And so I'm just not randomly barking here. Okay. And, and, here's, and here's where it's important at this point in this investigation to believe these victims. Okay. And she told me, she goes, Chris, she says, I don't care if the world believes me or not. I just want my family to believe me. This sweet, this sweet person, this woman, has been suffering for 37 years. It's crazy. And that's just one. There's many more, I guarantee it. We just don't know about them yet. Chris, one of the things, while you're telling me this, because I didn't know about it, um, I only heard that little bit on, on the interview today. Uh, sure. On your, on your, on your, but one of the things right away, obviously, is connecting the dot to what he offered to do to find Summer. And if you guys haven't seen it, go, go to the interview room after this live stream. Go to the interview room and watch Chris's videos on, um, on the case. This particular one that I'm talking about is talking to Don. And at one point in the video, he said he offered, and this, this makes this way more powerful at this point, knowing what you just said. He offered to be a child predator in order to find Summer. Am I wrong? That, that, that's pretty much the gist of it, right? That's what he yeah. said? Yeah, to play the role. He offered to play the role of a child predator in order to, to find Summer. So just think about that for a minute. I, um, I kind of did one of these, you know, like, what? What did you just say? And then you're trying to rationalize it, right? Like, okay, well, maybe he's just so desperate. You know, you're trying to come at different angles, okay? Well, let's walk this through. Like, why did he say that? You're going to pretend right. to be, right? Like that. And now. Um, Why didn't he say, I'll go buy dope? He He's bought a lot of dope in his time. So you see, this is one of these. That's the post behavior. Right. Okay. I mean, it's easy if you think your daughter has been kidnapped by dope dealers to to go say, well, I'll just go buy dope from them and see where my daughter is. Okay. It's another thing, to your point, Linda, when you say, well, I'll just pose as a child predator. And, and listen also to the response of when I said, well, do you think, you know, somebody bought, you know, so bought her? And listen what his response was. Okay. Right? It's interesting. Uh, again, uh, people got to go see, they got to hear it for themselves for a second, slow down for a second, right? Which you do, Miss Miss Linda. And and by the way, how's Mr. Linda while we're talking about this very difficult stuff? He's good. I think he, he may be in, in I hope sure he is. Mr. Linda, how are you, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your service. You're a great man. <laughs> so the, the other side of this piece of the puzzle is, okay, well, you're, you're right. Why do you pick that role? What, why? Okay. What in the world? I mean, who, you know, if, if I was going to go undercover, okay, I'd say, um, is, okay, I'll go make the donuts at Dunkin' Donuts at 3 in the morning. Okay. <laughs> why? I like donuts. I can talk about donuts all day long. Okay. I, w I would not say, by the way, Okay, I'll just go ahead. Yeah, and you know, I work vice for two years and I used to wear the wire. And those dogs used to send me into the bathrooms at three o'clock in the morning. Okay, not a good place to be 
when you're kind of, you know, goofy like me. Okay. So that said, okay, that is a whole weird place to be. And or want from, to be. And a and somebody just to say, well, I'll ju- that's interesting. I'll I'll take a shot at that. Okay. Well, I was like, are you serious? But I didn't say it. No, you didn't. You didn't. You did it. Cheers. You gave him a chance. You gave him a chance. <laughs> Cheers on that one. You gave him a chance. A and W, if you're chance. out there, Miss Linda needs a sponsor. Coconut okay. water. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that before. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you know we have to laugh, right? We have to laugh. Oh. Not at not at the case. No. Not at the case. Just lighthearted. You know this is heavy stuff. I mean, you just got off a of vacation. Oh, so. I, let me tell you, I, I, I was gone a week and it feels like a month. Then you come back and you're trying to catch up and I was binge watching. I have not like, I'm, I'm not breathed in like all week watching your stuff. And it's something that it's a case that, you know, I've been watching from the outside. Okay. We got the timeline. Let's come in, let's come in. But I'm a mom as well. Yeah. And, yeah. and I have two kids and my littlest one is six very similar to summer and um he doesn't watch paw patrol anymore but let me tell you i've seen four or five seasons of paw patrol every day <laughs> for mm-hmm. a couple of years so you know you see that and it's just um it's heartbreaking you have, have a little girl five years old um seems very energetic and loves paw patrol loves to swim loves to twirl loves to be girly loves to be also not girly right you know and um but i think about how scary that would be uh, whatever happened to her that day how scary it would be is it's not what she knows and you know then then how eerie it is that you have a little girl you know out having fun playing in the water and then she's wearing her outfit that she could be wearing to kindergarten and that's the last outfit anybody you know what i mean that's the last thing she's it's just awful and five years old they, they are they are curious they're curious things change and they say like well she would never wander off yeah i, I wouldn't think my son would either this week he got in trouble going a little too far on his bike so you know they do things too but uh it, it breaks my heart it really breaks my heart when you think of and and maybe that's why i don't talk too much uh go go down that road because it's hard to chew uh as you know you're a parent chris as well and there's a lot of parents out here and just to know that this five year li- five year little girl is lost and we, you know she, whatever has happened to her but she's not home and uh, it just to know that she was terrified or didn't know what's going on or I don't know. Well, you know, if we think about this big picture here, okay, there's only a couple of possibilities. You know, there's a lot of theories about, you know, was she taken, you know, for her safety? You know, was she taken because CPS was coming? You know, was she, you know, was she, you know, did she wander off and a stranger showed up and, and snatched her? Is there somebody on the property that's familiar with the property? Okay. Did she open the door? Was the door open? Uh, could she open the door, right, yeah. in totality? Did the boys leave the door open? Okay. But now you talk to Dad at length, and in a press conference he says, well, you know, she's gone. I told him from the very beginning she was abducted. Okay. Well, how, have you ever heard a parent show up? And just say, yeah, she was, she's abducted. I'm just letting you guys know that. Okay. Right from the get-go, number one. And then, I've always known something was going to happen to her. And then, I see her dead and buried. And then, and the, the end thens keep, the list keeps going on. Okay? I see her in a dark room, maybe. And I hope... She's not being, you know, abused or something, you know, tortured or whatever he said in the very beginning. I got to go back and listen to the news uh, reels again. Okay. And then there's this 
story that's created. Okay? So now I'm going to let the public in on a secret. When I was following Candace, she went into the Dollar General store. And she was in there for over 20 minutes because I had a feeling something was happening inside there. Well, she came out 20 minutes later with a bag, two, I think a couple of pizzas in it, and put it into her car. She turned around and went back in for another 10 to 15, about another 10 minutes or thereabouts. And I looked over at Karen and I said, she's calling Don. And I showed up at the house, and he's MIA. But the TV was on downstairs. And then I, you, know, you hear people say, well, in the South, we leave the TV on all the time. Okay? Well, I was born in North Carolina and lived in Hawaii when I was, grew up in Hawaii as a young kid and then moved to you know, SoCal. Okay? But I also lived in Texas, South Carolina. Okay? And the first thing I think any parent says is turn off the TV. We don't want to waste the electricity. Okay? Now, maybe that's just my thinking, and I could be 100% wrong. Maybe down in the basement, you do leave the TV on all day. Okay? I don't know. But I had a feeling maybe he was in that shed. Now, Don called me the next day after I, after I said that, and he was furious. He started the phone call yelling at me. How dare you okay. say I was in that shed, man. I wasn't in that shed. I trusted you. Okay. Well, what do you trust me to say that you, you may have, you could have been in the shed? Okay. Okay, I was wrong. I apologize. And I have apologized. Okay. However, I am curious about the behavior. The first behavior I'll start with. is this one. <clears throat> when the federal marshals, the FBI, and TBI came looking for Don Wells for a fugitive who was on the run, they found him hiding in a storage room at the house. And then I'll, I'll raise you one more. When he molested his sister, his father found him hiding. Might be cut off there. So that can... Am I back? Yeah, you're back now. Am I back? So the second one is after he molested his father, his father found him hiding as his little sister was in the house telling mom all about her struggle. The third one okay, is the first place he went when he came home was not to the house where his daughter was last seen. He went to a shed okay, to look for her. Or at least he thinks he went and looked inside. Right. Go ahead, quick, I'm listening. Quick question on that. When I saw your video, I saw two sheds. Is that correct? Am I correct there's two sheds? One at the bottom, one up the top. Correct. He didn't right. say which shed he went to. That's right. He knew. Well, he did, yeah. he did. He said he was down at the bottom. Because he drove up the little hill there. You can see it. You can see it on the video. Okay. Yep. He drove up the little hill, and he said that his boys were down there looking for summer. Not at the shed, but near the creek. Right. Uh, back there. Okay. Right. But didn't you say so, the shed, and he didn't say which shed. He just said the shed, and then he said the bottom shed. Right. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Right. So the, so the question is, why do you go down there? If the dog trail is on the other side. And, and not only that, okay, 
why are you looking for her down there? Every parent, the first thing the cops tell you and the 911 dispatchers tell you, have you searched the house? Yes. Go back. Hear the you got to back up, Chris. You said, have you searched right. the house? Yeah, you just say, have you searched the house? And then go from there. Yes, so have you searched the house? And then yeah. the 911 dispatcher... Okay, tells the officers, okay, he, they dispatch him. And what does one of the supervisors say? Make sure you search everything or something to that effect. I can't remember it exactly. Okay. But the whole protocol of a missing child is immediately get to that house, get everybody back in that house for a moment, okay. contain the parents because you don't want to lose the parents. If you lose the parents while searching for a child, okay, now you've lost the parents when you've found the child, okay? So you got to keep right. everybody contained. I, You put an officer with the family and say, okay, don't leave. We're going to get some information from you. Wait here. And the reason for that is you do a BOLO, a B-O-L, and you stand there and say, what was she wearing? Okay, right. white female, 40 pounds, 5 years old pink top, black pants, okay? What else can you tell me about her? Short, blonde hair. Short, you get where I'm going there? Yes. Okay. That immediately has to go out over the air. That immediately has to go out over the air, okay? And then the second follow-up to that is an endangered child. This is an endangered child alert. They send that out to NCIC, National Crime Information Center. From that point, the next level up after you have established this child is gone is an amber alert that is now that activates all of the state resources everything so all of this was pretty rapid it was rapid as this all unfolded and you know kudos kudos to the sheriff's department because they put it in motion quickly and I'm not saying everything was perfect. Don't misunderstand me, right? Because I'll, I'll call it the way it is. Okay. But they did a they they contained that area. SAR was, you know, was notified immediately. They did a heck of a job, and I think there were a hundred, close to uh, resources from over a hundred agencies, were sent to look for Summer Wells. Okay. Yeah. And. And it lasted for, what, weeks? Weeks. And, and they were exhausted. Okay. So, go ahead. Do they know what time the officers arrived on scene? I do, but I'm, I can't say. Got it. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, let me just think of my, my next thought here. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> no, no. No, it's good. So, back to, back to Dawn with the shed. Um, the reason why I asked that question is because, well, wait a minute, he, he got there, he said before the cops. So I'm wondering if he went to the shed and then decided to go up and then the house. But I do know that you asked him, well, did you search the house? He said, well, Candace did. And then he said, no, I did as well. Yeah. And yeah, but he wasn't exactly sure when, but, right. but here's the challenge with that. When the PD... When the PD showed up, okay, they locked that driveway off. Yeah. That's protocol. Nobody in, nobody out. Because that area is, is now, it's basically, you know, almost a crime scene. Okay. And that's why they do everything methodically. So who do you have there at that time? You have dad, you have grandma. You have the boys, and there's pictures of them playing football. Okay? They're, you know, you've probably seen them on the Internet. They're throwing footballs. Okay? You've got the search and rescue, and they establish a command center right there at the top of the hill at the house. Okay? So the question is, do any of those officers remember Don pulling up? I don't know. There's that timeline. 
We'll see. Um, I have a question about the phones, if you are able to answer it. And um, Don said something again in his thing that they got um, their phones back and everything after 3.30 was erased. What does that there's a program. It, it there's a there's a software that dumps it, and it, it's the same company that got the number off of uh, the shooting in San Bernardino from the shooter's phone, where he had locked the phone. Okay. Okay. So they put they, there are some devices that can be utilized, and and when it's returned. Everything in it's been eliminated. Okay. Okay. I wasn't That's, sure. But I'm going to be surprised if they gave it back to him, though, to be honest with you. That usually goes into evidence. Okay. Yeah, because I was thinking how that works. I'm just going to hang on one second. I'm just going to slow down chat just for a second. Here. So we get to ask him for that. Um, yeah, I'm wondering how that worked. Uh, what was the other thing? There's something else on that. With the phones so they so they got the phones back they said and it's deleted from 3 30 which would be around the time Candace would have gotten home in and around after um after that and then the couple hours after right correct right so that but that's interesting to me because my understanding or what i my assumption was was when they have to take stuff off. You take a certain thing, like whatever you're after to take off, and then they don't have to give it to you back, right? They don't have to give you whatever was on your phone back. Correct? Yeah, I mean, if they dumped it, then... You get you know, what you get. Yeah, you, you, you typically book it into evidence. Right. Which is one thing she, he said, too, that there was a, a, a camera and a TV that wasn't on the list. Because he said they turned over his house six or seven times, wasn't it? Six or seven times he said the house was turned over. Right, and that's a receipt ordered by the court on a search warrant. Bear Bear had that. Yep. Remember that? We, saw, we, we talked about yeah. the list after that. And, 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 and his defense team was just handed three terabytes of information this morning. Ooh, that's Oops. a lot of information. Yeah, it's a lot. that's a lot of... Uh, there's a team... It's called the CAST team and cellular analysis. Okay. Yep. And these guys and gals in that, in that group really know what time it is. And there's some other stuff that I'm not going to mention that, you know, you're toast. Okay. If, if, you, if, you, if this comes out and it doesn't line up with this, okay, just ask, you know, just ask Alex how that worked out for him. That's right. In the, in the backyard around the, the fire pit. Okay. That's right. Is, Someone's asking when were the phones picked up. Kana said she had hers when Chris interviewed her. Well, I've heard two different things because I heard they went down to AT&T and bought new phones. So maybe those are the new, that. maybe those are the new phones. Because Hunter know. said he was still waiting for his phone, right? Yeah, they even took Hunter's. Does that tell you something? Yeah, they took Hunter's. And, and he didn't, he didn't get, get back. back. So there you go. That's very interesting. Um, I'm going to take a couple questions here. And let's see, though, because it is going fast. So you guys have to bear with me here. Okay, it might take a minute. Um, what have we, what, what else here, Chris, what have I missed here? Cause I have a whole, I, I binge watch when I say I binge watch your stuff and I watched them like two or three times. So I've been busy <laughs> trying to get this all down. Um, we'll connect those dots the way you do. And, and, you know, let's, you know, let's see. I mean, if right now, until a little bit more information is made public, Okay. Yes. Then you know, everybody, you know, has a has a theory. Everybody has an opinion. You know, everybody has, um, you know, you know, 
they have their way of doing things. And so we, we just have to let it take its course. And when they, you know, when they put the bracelets on, whatever that means, okay, then we know who the perpetrators are or perpetrator. There could be it's, multiple. It, exactly. And they have to look at everybody like parents included always, especially in something like this. Right. I mean, you got to figure it out. The faster they can figure it out, oops, the faster they can figure that out, the faster they can find little summer or connect the dots anyways. Um, right. You, ha you have to start at the house. I mean, I, I had a little girl, uh, Letitia Hernandez, December 16th, 1989. She was standing in her front yard okay, and she vanished. I spent a month making sure that the circle around her did not have other connections. And by the way, she was a, a little Hispanic girl from Mexico. So I had, I had an international problem okay, with our team. Okay. And when I say a team, I mean hundreds of investigators okay, behind the scenes, right? Now, we know who did it. It was a registered RSO three doors down from her who snatched her out of the yard, put, him in, put her in his car, and drove her over uh, near Palomar Mountain in San Diego County. I found okay, her undergarments in a tree okay, after we discovered her uh, decomposed body after about a year. Okay. So I am very familiar. I've worked others, you know, uh, kids, a lot of kids. You know, I worked on the three boys at the West Memphis Three. I interviewed Christopher Morgan. And these were three little boys who were, you know, slaughtered in, um, you know, West Memphis. And it was crazy. Okay. And so these are the kind of things that, you know, I'm just not shooting from the hip here, folks. Okay. Yeah. You can, you can, go, you can go into YouTube and find that video of me interviewing Christopher Morgan. Okay. That, somebody put that up. I had no idea that it was up. And you'll see a younger me. And so these, these you know, people that, you know, you know, think they got it all together, well, good for you. I'm, I'm with you. Okay. I have nothing, you know, nothing to prove to anybody. I have a track record. Okay. No, and we respect I, I, especially Well, I'm, I, I'm here for a, I'm here for a five-year-old little girl. 100%. And, you know, let the cards fall where they may. You know, so. We can keep talking about her, and that's important. Just like you said, keep her out there. Keep her out there. 100%. Yeah. 100%. I'm going to take a couple comments here. I see one here. April says, uh, she's talking about Don. He throws all employees, neighbors, wife and fam under the bus, druggies and SA off all around. Self tries too hard to control the narrative and tell story as a matter of fact as he was there and that makes him number one a suspect to her. Thanks, April, for your comment. Um, I, I've gone through a couple of that. I'm going to be doing, for those of you who are watching, I will be doing a timeline an updated timeline and as stuff keeps coming in, I will keep doing the timeline and updating, updating, updating. And I let, I do show discrepancies and then, you know, just give you the information and uh, go through it. Uh, there will be a Candace timeline will either be happening while well, I'm going to try and do it tomorrow. So I don't do it uh, over top Chris's show because everybody has to go to Chris's show on Sunday. Um, but we'll get that out and then you guys can, can take a look. Um, uh, Manglia is asking, hi, Lynn and Chris, would you would like to hear your opinion on the body found yesterday? Could it be related? Uh, I heard about that earlier today. I have no idea. Um, that was in Tennessee a couple hours away. I haven't heard anything. All I saw, somebody told me that today, and they said to go take a look online, and I just wanted to take a look at the vicinity. Uh, so, I mean, who knows? So, hang on. Let me correct something. See how we're okay. living. Chris, Chris seems to be involved in a lot of miscarriage of justice cases. Okay, I love that. Well, well, here's one on the West Memphis Three. Those boys that were in custody, okay, I interviewed the guys they thought did it. How about that one? Okay, so I appreciate that curveball, but I pay attention. Go ahead. It's all good. 
<laughs> okay, here we go. Um, thank you, Chris and Linda. Chris, you did great. Your heart is in the right place. Absolutely. Thank you, Keith. It's not an easy thing. I mean, even from where I'm sitting to watch you go through this and you, you're out there and pounding the pavement and asking. I'm learning from you, Chris. I'm learning, I'm watching that. And uh, you make everybody feel comfortable, you know? You, well, I, I you mean, really you know, I learn, I'm like the next guy. Hey, okay? I'm human. I make mistakes. And I admit it when I make mistakes. And, and at the same time, you know, it, I think f folks don't really know, you know, the totality of my career. And, and I'll just give you a, a, a snapshot of why kids, I got involved with kids. So back in the day, um, it was actually 1990, right after Letitia, a supervisor says, guess where you're going? I said, I have no idea. He said, you're going to learn about these guys, okay? And your emphasis is going to be children. So as a result of that, there were three of us in California, one up north, one in the middle, and I was in San Diego County, okay? Whenever there was a kid problem, okay, then we would get consulted because of our training, okay? So that's why when, you know, in the John Bonet Ramsey case, Lou Schmidt called me, okay, when he went into the Boulder DA's office because he had a, he had a list of RSOs, okay? Well, I found those guys for him. Okay? And that's why in the West Memphis Three, there were two brothers that came out to SoCal, and I was working with the detectives in that case, and I interviewed them and sent those interviews back to you know, that state there. And by the way, you can look this all up on the internet okay, if anybody's interested. Okay. And the other things, you know, and, uh, you know, I just put up a thing on the Crow case today on my channel in the community channel. Okay. The most important witness in that case that was never interviewed was the dog. And the DA looked at me, Paul Finks at the time, he says, he says, McDonough, why, what, what do you mean the dog? And by the way, I'm not, in that, I'm not in that room when you first see some of that stuff. That's Mark Risley and, and Ralph Clater. <laughs> okay? So when you read the facts of the case, if you're interested, I'll make them public tonight over my, my um, uh, page. Okay? Um, and there's others. There's a lot more. But I don't go around saying, hey, look at me. Okay? My goal is to help find children. That's my expertise. That's why I'm on the Cold Cage Foundation. Mm -hmm. okay. And, you know, I, w one day you're the devil, and then the next day you interview a guy like Brandon Wilson, who was, a, you know, a sadistic murderer of children, and he demonstrates it on me. Okay. You can go look at it. Okay. And then you're an angel. But then the next day you could be, you know, the devil again, because that right. comes, it comes with the job. Okay. I'm used to it. It know? comes with go anything, ahead. really. Yeah, go ahead. Keep shooting. I'm good. You know, yeah. I'm a moving target. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get it yeah. all, right? You get uh, it all. And you do, too. I mean, I, I, we've watched you. Uh, you know, Karen and I have watched you, Miss Linda, and you are so passionate about those people, those children right behind you. Okay. I, I, we tell you all the time, you've missed your calling. But you still have time, okay? You still have time to connect those dots for the right reasons, okay? Um, so yeah, anyway. never say never. I, I've been. I'll talk to you offline on on a couple of options, but Roger that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Natalie says, uh, "Oh no, oops, I missed one. Hang on here." Um, Brain Dancer says, "Can you speak of why you feel the police are doing a good job and on the right track? I'm confused why they haven't spoken to the public and canceled EquiSearch." didn't share info with them either. Chris? Uh, read, I'm trying read that to one up. again? That's um, all right. Yeah, I'm trying to put it up, but it's not working. Um, can you speak of why you feel the police are doing a good job and on the right track? 
I'm confused why they haven't spoken to the public and canceled EquiSearch and didn't share info with them either. Uh, well, I didn't know they were coming that day. I knew they were coming, but they weren't telling anybody that they were coming down there. Okay? Well, I just happened to be down there with Candish when they pulled up. Ah. Okay? And I was down there, you know, with Miss Robin, and she was walking Buddy with her sweet little girl. Okay? That's the picture of Buddy at the horse with the horses. She took that. Okay? And so I was over, I asked her, I said, can you, do you mind taking Buddy? And so I can, you know, talk to Candace in private over here. And she goes, yeah, of course, no problem. And by the way, she is a wonderful person. She is an absolute sweet person. Okay. And her heart is in the right place. And she, you know, she's, she has no guile. She's not judging anybody. She's not, you know, talking about Candace or Don. You know, she, these are just church members. They're, they're, you know, it's a little church family, right? And so that's, you know, that's just how they are. And so what happened was we were, my back was to the circle there where they pulled up. And Candace looks over. And you'll see me, I turned around, I was like, you know, who's that? Yeah. Because they, they didn't tell anybody, right? It was top secret, okay? Uh -huh. And so she goes, you know them? I said, I'm assuming it's that search group, so they're down here to help. And she goes, oh my gosh, and she was just bawling, okay? She was, she, she sat down, okay? And it was like, you know, well, you're not going to go talk to him. <laughs> you know what I mean? In terms of her emotional condition. Okay? Because she was just relaying to me about Summer. Okay? And now these people show up. Okay? And now, what does that mean? I don't know. I know she wasn't purposely avoiding them, and I, you know, and you know, I call it the way it is. Okay, you know, that that's just the truth. Okay. And you know, she she got thrown under the bus for not coming over and saying hi, because Miss Robin was over there taking selfies with them. Okay, well, okay, I can understand that, but you know, she was recreating in her mind what that day about summer. And then a bunch of people show up who are great people, by the way, okay? amazing people, and she's overwhelmed okay? and didn't think, did not process what was taking place. Okay? And you see me, I'm in a couple times in that video, I even turned because people were walking down that path there. And I looked at her, I said, do you know them? Okay? She goes, no, I, I don't know them. Okay, well, one of those ladies, I'm going to tell you this piece, walked over to her at the end of it. They came to her and gave her a hug. Okay. Now, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Uh, so, but that's the truth. That's what happened. Okay. And, you know, unfortunately... You know, she got she got thrown under the bus on that piece of the puzzle. Okay? Maybe there's other pieces that, you know, the, the bus is deserving. I don't know. And that's not my responsibility. Okay? It's to gather facts and truth and then, you know, put it out there on the, you know, I'm not, I'm not knocking Dave Rader, okay, at all. Okay? I mean, I just saw a little chat thing. Don't knock Dave Rader. Wait, what do you want me to lie? I mean, seriously, would that make you feel better if I lie? Okay. No, it, it is what it is. It happened the way it happened. Okay. And mm -hmm. that's the way it is. Okay. Uh, Butterfly Kisses says, just to clarify, it's Rogersville, which is Hawkins County, not Kingsport, which is in Sullivan County. Thank you for all your hard work. Okay. <laughs> all right. There you go. Um, Thank so you. Many places to remember. Okay. Um, 
man, it is going by fast. I and let's give a shout out for a minute here because we have to shout out the incredible job our mods are doing tonight. Incredible. Thank you so much. I'm seeing it mostly classy in here, which is really great because 99% is classy and the other 1% is not welcome on the doormat. So <laughs> um, really great job, everybody. I'm so thankful for you guys to hang out. And thank you, Chris, too, to hang out with us tonight. Um, I know you've been so busy. You and your family have been so busy. So it's worth I appreciate it. it. And we always have it's, good chats, don't we? Yeah. And there's a lot. there's a lot that we don't put up on YouTube. Yeah. You know, I, you, you know what I was involved in with that guy in Colorado behind yep. the scenes. Yep. Right. I mean, how many times did we chatted up and, and sure enough, they all fell into place, didn't it? It sure did. Yeah. So, you know, it there's sure a lot did. there. Yeah. There's a lot going on that I, you know, God's given me a gift and I, I'm supposed to use it without interfering. And that's the thing. Everybody has a gift, right? Every right. single person has that gift. It's just finding what that is and, and uh right. and going with it hybrid P pisces says starve the trolls of oxygen and they die off all like cancer sir thank you chris you are so valued and appreciated <laughs> yeah welcome. it's one thing isn't it uh, chris tell me something now that you've done a little bit on youtube what's the what's the um one thing that's the eye opener for you that you never that's just a surprise you or the eye opener about this youtube world i i think What's been interesting, okay, is the condition of those who attack, okay, it's as if it, they make a difference. They, you know, when the five officers were killed in Dallas when they were murdered on the street in that shootout, remember that? When was that? The, well, they were there were five officers that were shot uh, during a riot okay. in Dallas. The chief of Dallas PD came out and said, "Look, if you've got something to do other than type it in your keyboard, basically, okay, then come out here and do it." Okay. Until then, you know, keep it to yourself. Okay. I think what YouTube has confirmed for me. And there's a big study in psychology today about, you know, sociopaths behind the keyboard and psychopaths behind the keyboard. These are the same people that during lunch in high school would knock your milk over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they haven't changed. Okay. So the best way to handle them, okay, is ignore them. You're wasting your, you're wasting your precious time, okay? <clears throat> I, I've been doing this 40 years, kids, okay? I don't even read your stuff. I just delete you. Yeah, blocking yeah. is a great thing, isn't it? Oh, it drives them crazy Block because, you see, true. that's their identity. Right. So I just take their identity all day long. Okay. And 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 then have a sandwich, okay. <laughs> and and I'll keep doing it. <laughs> so that and, doesn't and surprise you about it. No, That's not what, right here. But what surprises you on here? Like, what is the? Huh? They're mean. People are mean. Yeah. That surprised me. Yes. That surprised me. People are mean, and yes. and they and but it's okay because well, it's not okay. Number one, to be mean like that. It's okay to to have a disagreement, agree to disagree. Yes. That's not a problem. No. Okay. Uh, but you know these people that think, okay, they can affect your life. And by the way, I don't know if you if you want a really interesting thing to see. And and I'm going to put all the I'll put these people the trolls on notice. Okay. If you go to the Cold Case Foundation, look up the intelligence arm of cold case okay and i'm going to have james on okay. here here's a hint okay. we see everything coming in to that website okay. yep. trust me 
And by the way, I set a couple of baits. There's one guy that has links connected to try to DOS cops that are connected to child porn. Okay. Well, you're on notice tonight. Okay. I know that. Okay. And we know that. And we're going to have some three-letter agencies probably knock on your doorbell if you don't knock it off. But I'm putting you on notice tonight in this live with Miss Linda. And you know who you are. Okay? But I know more about you than you think. Okay? This isn't my first rodeo. So you guys, need to, you guys just need to put it back in the box. And, you know, this is about a five-year-old little girl. And, and if you think that anything you say or do is going to stop us from helping, you're nuts. <laughs> you, yeah. It's that simple. I mean, I'm a really nice guy. You know, I am. I try to be anyway. I try to te treat people with respect. And, but, you know, if you're a criminal and, you know, you want to play, great. Let's play. I, I've been putting bracelets, matching bracelets on people for a very long time. And you're not going to intimidate me. It ain't going to happen. In fact, all you're going to do is embolden me to go further with you, that per, those people. And, you know, butterflies and rocks and all those other things, those nutty things. Okay. Good. Go hang off a cliff somewhere. You're good with it. Okay. I'm happy for you. Okay. But don't screw with me. Trust me. Yeah, that's not the kind of bracelets I want, that's for sure. <laughs> well, then I would never well, want to be on your bad side. <laughs> if they do it to me, they'll do it to anybody. That's right. Even, oh, e even you took it during the Chris Watts case. Okay. Oh, Lord. You're a, yeah. Death threats, yeah. all kinds of threats. And that was one of my first videos, so I was really green. And yeah. I took a lot, and I still do. I still do. I put, I put up a, a post. Hey guys, I'm coming back. I've been gone a week. I've, you know, taken some time to just regroup and, and, uh, uh balance and some self love and, you know, just and immediately three people's like, well, that's not the nicest picture you've ever put up. And oh my God, did you break your nose? What happened to that? And, and you literally just coming back saying, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm feeling rejuvenated and coming back and people just have to, and, and that's minor, but the death threats and the going after families and going after, like, what are you trying to even prove? Right. Honest, like, what are you trying to prove? Go instead, go instead, do some self-reflection, figure out what your gift is in life and go help people. Amen. And, you know? and But I, I was talking to some friends recently. They're, they're afraid that these people, you know, they're putting their family information on uh, out in the public and this, you know, their kids and all this other stuff. And I'm thinking, who does that and why? Somebody okay. who's lost. They have well, lost I, and no moral compass. Lost. You don't. Yeah. And, I, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and maybe, you know, maybe that's a maybe that's a um, a sign of the times in terms of our society. Right. We, we used to know, like, on a, like a, uh, when it was a full moon, for an example. And I think nurses and doctors can, uh, can relate to this, right? And, you know, they knew, they know, and your, your husband probably has a thousand stories like this. You just know that, you know, all the nut jobs are going to come out of the woodwork yeah. on, on okay. you know, a full moon, right? And so we used to watch the traffic in the evening. If you knew, right there, Ann Miller says, yes, nurse here, yes. Yeah. You knew if the traffic just got crazy, okay, then people were at a different hyper t level, okay? And you just knew, just buckle up because it's going to be one nutty night. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so, same thing. There you go. So, and I think we see the same people in that come into these chats. You know, we got good guys out there, you know, uh, 
you know, A B is a good guy. I I really like that guy. And and that Tiffany who did the interview with uh, the, one of the victims here. I those are good people. Yeah, they're a little rough around the edges. And and you're you're like everybody loves Miss Linda. Okay, I <laughs> I can't get them to you know. You, well, you're a good person, and it shows because your heart's sincere. Okay, and then there's the other other side of this game. Okay? Maybe we can make a difference if we hold together as good people. Mm -hmm. And and we have some resources, by the way, if we do this. Uh, Trust me, when you look James up, he's in he's in the UK, by the way. And when you look at his resume, he worked for Scotland Yard. Wow. Yeah, he's he's the he's the real deal. Well, he sent me a whole threat assessment on all the players that we're talking about. Okay. And by the way, we know who they all are. And there's a couple of four or five crazies in this, in this game. Okay. Well, I'm putting uh, everybody on notice. Okay. I'm not afraid of you. Trust me <laughs> at all. Okay. And so if you keep it up though, you will be looking over your shoulder every five minutes okay? because you won't know what's on the other side. You Go know, ahead, it's, it's interesting because one of the things when I do videos and I know I'm getting close to the truth, you know how I know I'm getting close to the truth? Crazies come out and they start threatening. Yeah. I was threat last Ju- June, July, June or July when I put out Barry's thing in the triangle of triangle and all that and who did i get it i mean death threats coming out on that one and and just crazy crazy and i went aha i'm on to something absolutely and yeah, that's and exactly it the it's it's a threat like the, we're a threat you're a threat and what do people want to do who aren't of uh, who don't have moral compasses and don't have that uh, desire to help and and desire to do better is that that's what they do. They attack. That's how I know well, every time. Every time I know I'm getting Lori Vallow, same thing. I, I Charles, I did a year ago. Well, and that's OK, right? It's OK to somebody have a different opinion. It's not 100%. OK to attack you and not OK to attack 100%. you. I see right. that. I said, listen. You can have a different opinion. Nobody says you can't, as long as you keep it classy. The moment right. you don't, just like tonight, you know, come have a chat. Talk about these things. It's okay. Right. Don't, you right. know, don't crap on my doorstep because you're not going to have the welcome mat out for you. You're just not. And, right. and, and go ahead. we're all trying to do better and be better and help and make a difference. And, and so, I mean, these people are also in pain, Right. The people who are bringing you down and doing this, they're, they're in pain, not our fault. Okay. Right. That's their own pain. And they're, they're lashing out. Who cares? I'm not a makeup channel. Stop talking about my nose. I don't care. You know what I mean? Like right. go somewhere else. Uh, and, and even if I had a makeup channel, don't talk my nose. <laughs> well, but, and you know, it, like, it's not fair to you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I apologize. Because what it does is like, okay. Um, for example, I used to work years ago in an office, right? And I was told by upper management because I was in my twenties. He's like, you know, Linda, you're very, very smart, but you're not going to get very far because how, how you look wrong thing to say to me. Yeah. Wrong thing to say to me. So people underestimate me. Number one, number two, don't sit there. Like I, I love compliments. Like, like anybody else. Great. Thank you so much for the compliment. I'm grateful, but don't, don't talk to me like just because uh, um, um, of my looks of A, B, or C that I'm not a smart girl. And don't undermine what I do on here either. Or you know what I mean? Like, so yep. it's just, it, it's a tough thing for people who don't know. Like, for example, YouTube is not just hard with the trolls, but it's also hard uh, to take a break. I, I've been going, I've done videos no longer than three days without one for two, almost two years up until this last week. And I take a break, and I mean, I forced myself not even look at videos. 
and I come back and now it's an uphill climb to get back there. You know, it's, it's a tough thing. YouTube's not easy. It's not an easy thing. I think that's the biggest eye opener is true crime and how crazy it can get. Mm -hmm. And also the people who watch, I think, but I also see the most loving people in the world in here as well. They are so, because you know, they care. That's they right. They care. And that's, that's right. what and I love care. about our channels. We have really good people. We do. And, and they know that, you know, I have a zero tolerance for bullies. That's right. Me and, too. And I I'm, just, I've been known I'm, for that, Chris. I actually, you know, for that to get it i'm only five feet tall but you should see me <laughs> i i saw i saw a comment today oh you're all you know blah 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 you know and i just said bye bye i and, love the, and by, block the, the block from the channel i love that, that, that was and, and by the way there's a there is a philosophy in behavior analysis yep it's called the honey pot hey. okay so you see, what I did when certain people threw, started throwing things out, I set up a Discord channel. And I watched everybody come into it. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Right. <laughs> They're gone. Every one of them that came in like dummies. Okay. The honey it's pot, the, I got it. <laughs> like the bees. Oh, woo, that took a little bit. <laughs> yeah. All the bees came to the honey. Okay? And the moment they landed, okay, now I understood who they were. Yeah. And when I go back, so on some other places and others, because I've got other folks, okay, I have resources, as they say. Okay? What, what these guys forget is I have trained Internet Crimes Against Children detectives. I have trained them. And you're going to do it to me? <laughs> Go for it. Okay? Because I know what your IP address is already. Okay? Before it even leaves your keyboard. Okay? So keep it up. Okay. And I know all your little minions. Okay. Keep coming. Come to the honey pot. Okay. Because while I'm working, you know, summer, okay, yes. I'll bring other people to the light. Okay. And I'll do a whole show on you with James. Okay. <laughs> I will. And I don't and, doubt it. I'm I'm I don't And doubt all it. I have to do I'm is put their IP at all I have to do is show their IP addresses. I don't even have to use their names. Okay. That's the easy one. Okay. And so, you know, this is great. Uh, it's, I used to love, uh, one time I had my name spray painted in a vadio and, you know, where I used to work. 187 McDonough. Okay. That means, you know, Kill McDonough was the, it was, that's the penal code section in California. 187 McDonough. So we said, okay, you know, let's get the team. And we hit that neighborhood probably for about two weeks. If you as much as, you know, spit, okay, we had probable cause to FI you, okay? It got so bad, okay, for the crooks, okay, that they, they painted over it. <laughs> <laughs> Not us, not the, not the PD. The bad guy says, you know, there's too many cops here. There's too many cops here. What these guys forget is Cooper right now just got back from something. He's leaving Sunday to go train. Here's a hint, guys, okay? Cops in Dallas, <laughs> okay? So I'm just going to let you into a little game here, okay? I'm not just on YouTube. Okay. We actually train law enforcement. Okay. And and if you if you didn't get the video where you see us in North Dakota training the homicide task force for the first ever Native American, you know, assembled task force, that should be a hint. Okay. That we're standing in front of the class, not in the class. 
So keep it up. Keep it up. Uh, because I am looking forward to playing. Okay. But you won't. You will not include my family. I, I'll guarantee you that. I yeah. won't let you get that far. That that won't go that way. That's okay? a stupid move. So trolls okay. have YouTube channels too. I agree with that. Okay. okay. Let's let's take a couple questions. All Gary right, says, go. Linda, can you please ask Chris when Dawn saying she was dumped and stumbled when Chris asked what he said and Dawn said the day she was disappeared. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she he did. That is a good catch, Carrie. And you're right. That's that's like a, a red flag. Stumped and stumbled when Chris. I see what she's saying. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um. Okay. Um. M says. Okay. M Boag says. Linda. Linda. Chris. Y'all rock. Please talk about Don's response to Chris' question about what should happen to person responsible for Summer's disappearance. Nail and coffin. I was shocked. Why so lenient? Classic question. Response is what you look for. Correct. And if I remember correctly, he was talking about church and the Lord. And then he said, I can't tell you what I would do or how or how I would. Um, how did he word it? Let's see here. He said something like he's talking about the church and leave it to the Lord because that's what the Bible says. And then he says, I don't it's it would be harder to you know, easier said than done, I guess I'm if I'm paraphrasing what he's saying. Yeah, he he, he wouldn't wish prison on anybody. Right. Because he experienced that. Right. He said you'd be lucky to get out of their life. Right. I do remember that. Okay. I do remember that. Okay, sorry if I've missed some of your guys' um, questions. We've been chatting tonight, and the chat goes by so fast. Um, I really got to get somebody. I, I need a D-man I need to, I, to uh, highlight these things because he, he, it's so hard. He's been traveling. He's, uh, I've heard that. Yeah, he's, he's, he's going in the Air Force. That's awesome. Yep. So, I, I mean, we're picking. He's picking schools and stuff, so... Uh, yeah, he's, I, man, I wish I had five, five demons. I, you know, I just wish I had one. There you go. California Thunder's got it right. Okay. Um, L says that's incredibly creepy and disturbing. He said he always knew something would happen to Summer. Huge red flag. I'm, uh, that's a bingo card, 50, not 100. We'll have to do a, one night we'll do a, a not not soon, but, you know, down the road, we'll have to do a similar one where we've done before with the red flag. No, I'm not talking about Dawn. I'm talking in general. Right. Um, in general, just so we walk down that path. path. Um, uh, would the police possibly have dash cam video of what they drove up upon? In other words, to confirm when DW arrived or if the dogs were there. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Great question. All right. Anybody else here before we're going to call it pretty soon? I know it's getting pretty late uh, for for Chris. What are where where are you at? Like ten thirty at your place? It's ten forty one, but I'm here with Miss Linda. And we're we're having fun. I you're, you're you're allowing me. Man, poor Karen's over there. Like, don't say that. You know, don't tell them all what you have. And I'm like, you know, it's time that they get called out. So she's like, that's this is not your program. <laughs> you okay. no, it's all good, Karen. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know. You know, when we get together on here, we just chit chat it up, and we start but do, 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 like this all the time, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, and I enjoy I enjoy when you're on. We have lots of fun. One of my favorite guests, Chris. One of my favorite. Well, you're you're very kind. Where, you've taught me the ropes out here. I just, you know, when when Mike said, "Hey, go do your thing," and I'm like, "Okay, what is my thing?" And he goes, "You know, <laughs> basically." I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, and he just said, "You know, go do your thing," and. You know, even that, you know, even people were like, you know, what did you guys, you, are you, you have a falling out? You're mad at you? No, not at all. I've known Mike since 1998. Yeah. Okay? 
And, you know, he, it's his, it was his fault I even got involved in any of this stuff. <laughs> you know, if that's a falling out, then so be it. But that's not it, you know. And, no. you know, I know his family. I know everything about him. You know, yeah. we, worked, we worked a lot of stuff together. So, yeah, YouTube's not going to split you apart. No. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. We're, we're just so busy going different directions, and it's all well, good. Sure. So, There's lots yeah. on everybody's plate. Uh, Brain Dancer says, did Michelle reach out to Chris, the woman Don said was a PI, not PI, but runs an amazing search for missing kids. Would love to hear from her. Is she working with the police? So Don said, do you want her number? And I said, well, you know, who are who's connected to the number? And he said, well, I don't I, I only really know her name is Michelle. I said, well, uh, I would probably, you know, not call her because, you know, it's better that we have different angles moving. You know, CCF, we, we, we like to stay on the side of things, right? And then if we come up with something, then, of course, we hand it over to Ellie. And there's two ways we can we do that, right? One is we're direct, directly asked by Ellie and... and you know, by the way, we have 130 active cases, 130 murders right now active that we're working, Cold Case Foundation, with the law enforcement agency. Okay. When this thing went down, you know, it was probably a good idea just to kind of run parallel. If it went sideways, i.e. cold, okay, well, the sheriff's department may have three guys. Okay? We have 125 guys at the CCF, okay? And so that's why, you know, I'm the liaison to law enforcement relationships. And so when I, when all the stuff that, you know, we talked about, I, you know, we threw it at them. So here you go. Do what you need to do. Leave us out of it. Yeah. Uh, and they have it. Now, whatever that means, that's up to them. I haven't talked to them. I'm not their agent. I haven't done anything on their behalf or their, or their request. Okay. We, we, we strictly did this, you know, helping because it's a five-year-old girl. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's what counts. Okay. Yeah, no different. Okay. So these other people, uh, I'm sure they're amazing human beings. They have their hearts in the right place, and I'm sure they have some resources to help. Um, I, I just, at this juncture, need to make sure that the, that the communication and the flow of information uh, is there okay so that's why I, I i he didn't well he did text me their phone number but i didn't call him no i don't know uh, on that question um carrie asked do you think an arrest will come soon i don't know on that question <laughs> well we always hope anyways right for whoever whoever caused the disappearance of little summer you want somebody to be held responsible whoever that may be absolutely so absolutely and i want these stuff. sa victims give them justice yes and peace they deserve it yes 100%. they deserve it no woman yeah. should live 37 years or she's 49 now okay no woman should live to the age of 49 okay remembering the very moment it started, quote unquote. I asked her, I said, what can you tell me? She goes, Chris, she says, I remember the moment. Right. Now, that's what fires me up. Okay. That's when I go, okay, I'm going to do what I know how to do. Right. And, you know, there you go. So either way, Unfortunately, somebody has to come to the water of baptism here, as we'll yeah. call it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sheila says this is about summer. Everyone can help. Yeah, very, yeah, Sheila, way to go. Thank you. This is. And, and, you know, the people in Tennessee in that area are awesome. Okay? They are amazing. Okay? They're, they're just, and I hope there's a whole bunch in your, in your chat over here. Linda, because these are the most giving people, 
Okay. They're humble, they're God-fearing, and they're, they're wanting answers for this little baby. And they are helping in different ways, right? I mean, even, even if there are, you know, this doesn't go the way other folks think or we think or, you know, whatever, there's nothing like getting a letter from somebody, and I, and I have a, a few of them, from somebody that you locked up and they say, thank you for treating me with respect. I have seen the light, basically. Done. Okay. And that's how you go on your life, with your life. That's how you should be, you know, treating people. Okay. You, you don't have to, you know, be mean about it. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, you know the, the worst kind of cop is when you got everything calmed down and then all of a sudden this car pulls up and John Wayne steps out. Okay. And they call that the John Wayne syndrome, by the way, the first five years of police work. There's actually a term for it. Okay. Really? Yeah, and you get it and this guy shows up or whoever it is and you've got your you know, subject calmed down. Everything's copacetic. Okay. And next thing you know it, they're jacking them up. Okay. And detectives have a way of doing that too. And they're the worst kind because they, they come out and tell you, well, I think this guy, you know, really? Okay. How do you know that? You know, until it comes out of his or her mouth that they did it, okay. then all you have is what you think they did. So here's a question. How many times have we been wrong? Right? I mean, and I'll use the Crow case. Richard Tewitt was one of those times. And I refused to get involved in, in the, uh, the railroad. Okay? And you know that guy was found not guilty. True story. He's, he's, a, he's a manic, or, well, he's, he's a schizophrenic. Okay? And, you know, they thought he had whacked the, the little girl. She's 12 in her bed. So they had to put him in the house somehow. Because all the doors and windows were locked in the house. Okay. So how do they do it? They said he had a lozenge, a, 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 you know, one of those throat lozenges. Yeah. Okay. In his pocket. And they just happened to have the same kind in the house. Okay. But there's no forensics evidence. There was, a do there was a dog in the house. He's wearing a wool sweater. And he's hiding for 18 to 20 minutes was the time frame estimate. Okay. Locked all the doors and windows behind him, by the way. Okay. And this dog somehow doesn't know he's in the house. Okay. And so he never gets any dog hair transfer on him. Okay. So that night, they put a set of bracelets on him and brought him back to the PD. It was another agency. Okay. Put him in the holding cell. The criminalist who processed the scene knelt down in the victim's blood with his jumpsuit on. Then they sent that same guy back to the PD to process the transient. Well, he had the victim's blood on his uniform. So when he removed the sweater off the transient, okay, he testified that I could have cross-contaminated that sweater. Okay. So it goes to some hearings. The blood tests all come back, the DNA tests, and it's the victims, about three centimeters. Okay. Well, they went nuts. Okay. See, that's the guy. That's the guy. That's the guy. Okay. So they just, the DA, who's the DA right now in San Diego, Summer Stefan, says, well, we're going to dismiss charges without prejudice i.e., we could recharge you. Okay. It went through all this craziness. Okay. Everybody was sued, including me. Okay. The insurance company settled because that's what cities do when they pool all their resources. Okay. And then they took this guy to trial. And Paul Finks came to me at the time. He was a DA down there before summer. He said, Why, what's, your, what's your problem with this case? And I said, the dog. 
that he's the most important witness. Nobody's interviewed the dog. And he started laughing. He says, McDonough, he says, you're nuts. I said, Paul, think about it. This guy's a schizophrenic. He's in this guy's house, lying in wait to attack this 12-year-old little girl in her bed, leaves the house, locks the doors and the windows in the house, okay? and he's got three centimeters of blood on his shirt. Where's the dog hair? He's wearing a wool sweater. The victim had dog hair in her hand. So if it was any kind of defense, she would have transferred that into the sweater. Okay. So I said, you show me the dog hair, I'm on board. Until that time, I, I got I to gotta step back because, one, number one, that's their agency. It's not mine. So I went back to work. And shortly thereafter, Brandon Wilson killed Matthew Checky in the, in the bathroom. He's a nine-year-old little boy. Okay. And that was my case. So my attention was diverted. Okay. Well, you know, it is what it is. But, and so the DA at the time who got elected, a gal by the name of Bonnie DeManish, she says, I, the first case I'm taking on is this one. And if you elect me, I'll take it on. So they did. Okay. And what did he do? What did she do? She punted and gave it to the AG's office, George Drew, Drewliner. Okay. And then they you know, brought in the SO to reinvestigate it. Okay. In one of the interviews, this guy is asked about you know, confessing to this thing. And you know what he did? He said, can I have a bologna sandwich? Okay. You do realize that you know, this is blah, 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 right? Long story short, they take him to trial, and a jury, the first jury says, well, we don't think it was a first-degree or a second-degree murder. Somehow we think this is a manslaughter. Okay. And everybody went, a manslaughter? This guy is supposed to be in the house lying in wait to kill this 12-year-old girl. Okay. Well, that's a first-degree murder with the death penalty. So the court the appellate court looked at the case and said, how did you guys come up with all of this, i.e. to the jury? And they kicked it back. Said, no, this man needs another trial. Okay? And lo and behold, they found him not guilty on the second trial. Okay? Well, today, this guy can't even, he can't even walk out of his house without getting violated. Left and right, left and right. Okay? So anyway, we're diverting from summer, which I shouldn't be doing. But no, I, I appreciate I appreciate you telling me these stories. All of us, me and meaning our family. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Wow. The, the, it just makes you think like the things that you've seen and experienced. Uh, I mean, and investigated, like you said, this is not your first rodeo. This is not your first time. I have and over I 500 cases, of, you know, death cases under my 500, going north of 500 now with all the cases that, you know, I've worked, you know, not only with my agency, but other agencies. Okay. North yeah. of 500. And I have a 96% solvability rate, by the way. Okay. So, the, go ahead. No, that's fine. I'm listening. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, I'll say it after. <laughs> Ladies first. How about that? <laughs> I was just going to say one of the things that I've noticed from us talking over the last year about these things is you look at the details like no other. I think that to me, that's in my opinion, what I see from the outside. I'm not with you on these cases, but I, I see it as you looking at the details like no other. You, you know, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. It's my, it's, it's the minutia stuff. And, and, you know, you see things because what you're, not just what your experience tells you, but remember, I, I told you about Jigsaw, right, from LAPD, 44 years in homicide. Yeah. And he, he, you know, he told me in the very beginning, I had a chance to meet him. And he said, look, he said, slow down, yeah. okay, and be teachable. Okay. 
and you will solve crimes. The guys that know everything, they're toast. They're done. And this is one of these cases where you go, okay, what is Don teaching me? What is Candace teaching me? What is YouTube teaching me about Candace and Don? About me? About everybody involved? About TBI? What do they say about the sheriff? What do they say about all these other people? Okay. Well, this was, this was the gift that he gave me. And I met him at a CHIA conference, which is a California Homicide Investigators Association. And I picked this guy's brain. Okay, and, and I wanted to know what made him tick. Yeah. Okay? And this guy was amazing. He was amazing. Okay? It's, I guess it would be equal to meeting a, a you know, Medal of Honor winner in World War II, right? One of those things. Okay. But anyway, yeah. long story short, that was it. So be teachable. And you know, we don't have all the answers until the answers come in. Okay? But you can connect those chain, those links of the chain. Okay. And this is and this prevents tunnel vision for investigators. Tunnel vision. And you know, you don't ask how it happened. Why? You ask, you ask why. Exactly. Why did it happen? Okay. And and then you learn the how. But you have to understand why first. Yeah. Okay. And once you figure that combination out, then you solve crimes. It's not like pulling up and you know the 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 cops got the scene contained and it's domestic, okay, and you get called out at 3 in the morning, okay, and you're standing there, and you go, okay, what do we got? Well, that guy killed his wife. Okay. You know, you're under arrest for murder. Okay, let's go downtown and talk about it. Okay. No. Okay. This is, you know, the question is, well, why did you kill her? <laughs> Not how did it happen. No, okay. yeah. That Does why? that make sense? A hundred percent. That's... Hundred percent. I'm. It's always the why. There. For me, anyway. Yep, yeah. and that's why you're good at it. And and uh, okay, the Navy. Bet. I, I love this. I love Navy. Navy bet. Bet. Chris, Thank it doesn't matter service. the age. I'm 66, and I've never received justice from my abuser. The only thing I got was he committed suicide, and my mother still denies the fact. It's yeah. Tough. See, right there, there is exact this. Thank you, Navy vet. Uh, this is exactly why I do what I do. Because there are people that get it and they've suffered. And, yes. And and I learned that depth of suffering in different ways. Obviously, with the death of our son, I I didn't think a, a depth could, of pain existed like that. Okay. But I just feel, uh, you know, I feel really blessed that we were able to to rise above it. Okay. And um, you know. That's a good thing. And, and you know, we, we need to be nicer to each other. We really we do. we don't know. Yeah. We don't know what the other person has in their shoes. You know, we can't walk in their shoes. You know. You said a lot of people are go. walking around with pain. Flyer B says, love when Linda and Chris get together. They work so well. One another. Everyone wins in these chats. <laughs> Guess I'm going to have to get my butt to school so I can work with Chris in a different capacity. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> All right. All right, We've you guys. We've got analysts. Can... We've got five of them. We'd love to add you to the team at some point. Hey, maybe I could be number, lucky number six. There you or go. Or seven by the time I finished. <laughs> Takes a few years, go. does it not? It does, but not that long. You've you're already you're already three quarters of the way trained, quite frankly. Well, there we yeah. go. If I could just get that little extra in. <laughs> there you go. Right. All right, yep. you guys. Um, I want to say thank you to all of you for hanging out with us tonight on a Friday night. Uh, very, very, very grateful. And Chris, for your time, as always, and your time on the summer case and your time with, you know, Candace and Hunter and all of them, but whatever's coming up, we know. Sunday night, Chris has a show. Um, be sure to subscribe to his channel, subscribe to my channel, make sure you hit the bell, and make sure to look in the next few days because I'm going to have the timelines coming out. So, Really uh, can't working wait. as a team because I'm taking and I'm extracting the information from Chris and I'm putting it in a timeline as I do. And Use it uh, as much as you want. <laughs> that, thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah. we'll just we'll just keep going on it. And so hopefully we hope a uh, little summer will be found sooner than later. And um, 
the truth will come out as it always does. Sometimes people say it doesn't, but even 50 years later, it's coming out. We see that through DNA. Thanks so much for the mods and thank you for all of you for being so awesome. Um, I've seen some great chats in here tonight and everybody really, really uh, lovely and loving. So that's the most important thing. So hug your families tonight and thank you. Have a great weekend and I will see you in the next video. Bye.